Super Saturday here at the Australian Open. It's day seven, the middle weekend where crowds have just been absolutely enormous here around the grounds. No different today here on Rod Laver Arena where we have the world number one, Iga Schwantek in action. She'll be taking on Linda Noskova from the Czech Republic. Two youngsters. Hard to believe Iga Schwantek, just 22 years of age, a four-time Grand Slam champion, where she will take on an emerging star in Linda Noskova. Currently ranked 50, but certainly a player on the up in terms of rankings. Players just about set, where they will go through the usual walk of champions. Everyone who's had the fortune of winning this tournament gets their name up on the wall and what has become a famous walk in tennis. Women's singles round three action here on Rod Labour Arena. Please welcome from the Czech Republic, Linda Noskova. Great to have the world number one in the house here on Rod Laver Arena. In fact, the great man Rod Laver has been here today. And I suspect he might be here just catching a little bit of the action tonight. World number one, Iga Schwantek taking on Linda Noskova, who is just 19 years of age, a player on the up. My name's Josh Eagle, and a very warm welcome. It's warm today uh, to former top tenor, Andrea Petkovic. Petko, great to have you alongside of me for this one, and a match that just promises so much. Two really talented ball strikers. Absolutely, and you know what? These two players are in top form. Iga Shiontek is 7 and all this season, but Linda Noskova, she's 6 and 1 this season. The only loss coming against Rybakina in Brisbane in the semi final. So these are informed players, and Noskova has that backhand down the line that we know can trouble Iga Shiontek. So this will be a very interesting matchup. Okay, just a few reminders. This is Caden. Yes. So a few reminders. Uh, live VLC. So the uh, close calls will be shown on the big screens. 25 seconds on the clock. It's been shown on every uh, corner and up on the big screens. Apart from that, for the towel boxes, if you could take the red boxes and the blue boxes for you. Apart from that, uh, let me know if you need anything. And we will be taking a quick photo facing that way at the end of the coin toss. Okay, Caden, who would you like to ask? Okay. Yvonne or AO? So AO has been called. And AO it is. Receive. Okay, thank you. And this way, please. And the longest winning streak at the Australian summer. Thank you so much. Here's your coin. AO well done, has had. It, it's, on, it's on a roll. It's 500 and 0 against yes. Yvonne. <laughs> That's right. Well, she could certainly play Yvonne. And so can these ladies. It's been big crowds in today. A fair bit of warmth around the grounds and a bit of heat in this court. Had a bit of a shortened day session where Carlos Alcaraz was up two sets to love and was fortunate enough to have a walk over there. Well, this young lady 
Linda Noskova, just 19 years of age, a right-hander from the Czech Republic, been as high as 40 in the world, and Petko had her big breakthrough here in Australia, loves the courts in Australia, was in Adelaide 12 months ago where she sensationally made the final, and as you've alluded to, is in good form again this year down under. She really loves Australia. I think the quick courts suit her, and you, we will see why. She has big ground strokes, especially on that backhand side. She can take it up. The light jacket on, um, not much of a breeze coming through the court, which will suit both players. I think it's perfect playing conditions. And I love that Iga's gone to the night kit. We've seen, seen a bit of a mix-up here. No, it looks, uh, looks good in the black. I, I must admit, I do prefer that as opposed to the white that she's been wearing in the day. Well, you're such a fashion connoisseur, Josh. <laughs> well, after seeing you in your pink the other day, how could I well, not I'm be? inspired, yeah. You have inspired us all here well, at this Australia. and for the audience at home that is losing on seeing Laura Robson today, she looks more, <laughs> phenomenal, no, ph more phenomenal than ever with her hair back. So this is just a... Uh, Guys, uh, we need to work together more often. <laughs> All right, when we look at the head-to-head, -head, they've just played once, and that was in the quarterfinals there in Warsaw, where Svantec went on and won that title. And look, had a bit of a slow start for me in 2023, Svantec, but boy, she finished it well. And I think, as Ladies you're alluding to, Petko, she was, she was a bit cranky when she lost that number one ranking. And, and gee, she finished it in good form and, and started off well here at the United Cup here down under as well. Yeah, she really did. I really like that she talked about how that burden of defending that number one position at the U.S. Open, where all of the sudden Arena Sabalenka was able to grab it from her, how that had just no given her extra tension. She couldn't play as freely, but just the renewed Iga came back to win Beijing, Cancun, WTA Finals. And is on an 18 week, 18 streak winning. Wait, yep. 18? We know what you mean. 18 yes. wins, 18 match win streak. That's it's what been I was trying to say. 113 days since she lost a match. Well, certainly focused, always is, very professional. And the roof is firmly open. Had actually a couple of drops of rain today. It was nothing to worry about and just massive crowds in here on Super Saturday. What an event it's been. Packed every single day, courts full to capacity, and so many epic matches we've had in this first week. All right, players through their warm-up. Vishvantek to serve first. First sense. Iga Shriontek to serve. Ready? Play. And straight away, guys, I feel, feel like this is such a good matchup for Iga um, to play it. Someone who hits the ball big but isn't necessarily the best mover from side to side is the sort of game plan that she loves to commit to. Dorothy Lerner. Trying to take a tough one in the previous round against Danielle Collins. It was touch and go there for a while, whether she'd get over the line. Yeah, she said she already saw herself on the airplane back to Poland. And it was very, very close, but 
what champion's mind to turn that match around. And that forehand, a bit of a concern. We know Iga plays the best when she moves around to take that forehand from the center against Danielle Collins, who, granted, was playing very, very fast. She was moving around to play backhands from the center of the court. Ball. But I do think that for her game, it's so important that she continues 40, to use that forehand from the center of the court. It's impossible to see. It's so heavy. She opens up the court beautifully. And even if she's not feeling it maybe 100%, I think it just helps her game so much. Be happy with the start here, Shiontek. 190. First game. The improved service motion over the off season from Shiontek, getting a little more pop, a little more pace. Hi, Andrea, I totally agree with you. I feel like sometimes Iga loses confidence on the forehand after only a couple of unforced errors and maybe doesn't realize how solid her regular rally ball is, even if she's not going 100% on it. It's such a heavy shot and it gets so much depth uh, without her really needing to commit fully to it. So, yeah, I would absolutely like to see her play more inside in at times as well. It's scary to think that Iga Shiontek, who has been the dominating player of the past two seasons, has still room to improve. in the Noskovatis. Law 50. I believe this is Linda Noskova's first Australian Open, just given her level, her ability. Just still a teenager. Let Fusu.
Tag. That's great stuff. Game lost it. Confidence building opening game here from the teenager Linda Noskova. And you can One see that the tactics really trying to go back in behind and not mm. allowing Shvantec to get set to get that first good stroke in in the rally. Has to mix it up tonight to be any chance. And we see her standing here right on the baseline. She's one of the players that is actually above the average of the WTA Tour in taking balls on the rise and taking balls inside the baseline. And that is a factor, of course, that can rush any player taking time away from your opponents whenever you can. That's what, of course, Shantek does so well herself. Mm. Just holds that baseline and can really make you feel uncomfortable as a player when time is taken away. Fifteen. Ah. Fifteen. Fifteen. Andrea, I'm sure you'll back me up on this, as you always do. But, um, yeah, if you're in the locker room and you see the players who Iga tends to struggle against, it's the Danielle Collins, it's the Ostapenkos, it's people who give you zero rhythm and just go all out pace down at her feet and then open up the line. Showing off that great backhand Good wing, and yes, Laura, I am backing you up 100% in this assessment. Very sound from you. Um, but all jokes aside, yes, 100% the players. And another thing comes to mind, that backhand, right? She struggles against players who have a huge backhand. Rybakina, Ostapenko, Collins in the previous round, because they can take it up the line, and she doesn't like to be rushed on the forehand side. It's the extreme grip, isn't it? Mm -hmm. That's why she's got a very extreme grip, and that ball comes in hard and fast to get underneath it, get that racket face back vertical upon impact. It's not that easy to do. Yeah, that's a smart serve, the body serve. Especially against players who have big swings, who like to set up to fully swing through the shots. If you jam them, they need space around their body to be able to pull that off.
Yes. Advantage Sri Lanka. Game. Bit of a struggle, yeah. but the world number one holds. Fights off a few break points. 2-1. First Grand set. Leads, two games, two points. And there was a very nice example of what Laura spoke earlier, that exposing the movement of Noskova here, Iga Shiontek, with that back angled backhand that opens up the court. If you can get her on the run, it's harder for these big hitters to set up and take a big swing. Nicely done there. And interesting, Josh. Iga is one of the remaining players in the tournament. She has been the second longest on court. I don't think that's ever happened for her. No, normally races through matches and look, of course, physically very fit. And I don't think physicality will come into it. No, I just think that uh, she's obviously had the toughest, definitely one of the toughest, maybe the toughest draw, had to beat former champion Sofia Kennan in the first round and then former finalist Danielle Collins but I think for her it's a change up does that give her confidence moving forward I think it should I think it should I think it's sometimes hard to be in a position like Sabalenka is now when you're cruising yeah. through the tournament and all of a sudden you have a bit of resistance yeah. and you're not used to it anymore because no. you're so used to cruising so I like that for Iga actually Fine. Yeah, if I had to take a gander at what that conversation with the chair on player was about, it did seem like it was the people coming in at the end of the game. She's not quite comfortable with it. Also, you learn something new every day. Dan Cahill's down here next to me, and he mentioned that the top seed usually gets one particular box, and Iga has swapped that, and she's gone rogue and gone for the other coach's box tonight. Yeah, that's the perfect Iga Shiantek point for me when she goes around, takes the forehand from the center of the court. And again, it's a force to be reckoned with this forehand. When she has time, once the ball gets above hip height towards shoulder height, she's ruthless on the forehand. Fifteen thirty.
So important for Linda Noskova to get that first serve in so she can play first strike tennis. It's really hard to read. Oh. Let second serve. Oh. Yes. Yeah, it's just the pressure mounting that second serve return of Igas, one of the best returners on the tour, especially when it comes to second serves. That's good pace, 180 kilometers an hour. It's a, it's a rather flat serve. It doesn't have a ton of shape to it. Good couple of serves okay. to close out that service game. Two games all looking very comfortable, Linda. It's been a great Two start here. All. Absolutely. I think she looks very calm, very collected. Does not seem to overplay. That's sometimes the question, right? But she has three top ten wins already, so she knows how to play these top players. But sometimes when you have young players coming against the best in the world, they overplay it. They want to do something extra. They think their game is enough. None of this from Linda Noskova tonight. You stand up on the baseline to try and take that return early. If you do not get it right, you'll see here, just gets caught a little, drops it short, and you, you're gone. You're all, you've really got to be committed to either go up and go forward or stand a little deeper and go for length. From down here, I feel like she should go back. Uh, because especially the second serve where Iga's trying to go for a little bit more kick is bouncing up quite high so just playing it above shoulder height and it, it's not necessary she hits a big enough ball that she could go another meter further back and still get a, a really good strike is absolutely right especially because Iga has been using that body serve so effectively you just give yourself a bit more time to react that that to get out of the way if you take a step back hasn't used the backhand down the line she's what I feel like she's almost keeping that up her sleeve for a very good point <laughs> You see the difference in what she's able to do on the third time and time, almost come over the top of it, and it's got hardly any net clearance, really flat shot. It's a, an obvious choice for Eager as the server where to go here.
Impressive stuff from the world number one, Iga Sviantek, with an ace on serve. Leads 3-2, first set. Three games to two. All right, Iga Sviantek's made some massive gains in the off-season, and this, let's just have a little bit of a look at the reason why. The leg drive, the hip drive, so... Schwantek, her average is 1.94 metres per second. The AO average is 1.68. So once you get into this sort of jump position right here, look at the height, look at the power, look at the velocity she has incorporated. And that's all measurable now by the new updated Hawkeye skeletal analysis that they've been able to really dig deep and see what the body's doing. You can see there the difference the red is Svantec, 172 kilometers an hour and just a tournament average 160 so that's massive ball coming onto you much quicker with a lot more bounce here for Iga Svantec so Iga Svantec just getting a lot more pop a lot more bounce off the court a lot more leg drive in season Killer. Yeah, you're right, Josh. It, you could see Iga actually leaning towards that back end down the line, expecting it. And Linda Noskova is keeping it up her sleeve for yep. something special. Yeah, it's almost a case of you, you, you almost overuse it to keep a pin to the middle of the court, or you use it sparingly and wait for that big moment. So that's what it looks like. We know it's one of the best backhands down the line in the world. Thirty fifteen. Great depth on that return. And you really did a great job on analyzing oh. that technical aspect. I have to give you compliments oh. for that. Well done. Well, thank you. And again, just highlighting her athletic ability here. Have a look at the footwork, the movement from Iga Svantec. On defense, does a good job of not running directly to it. She gets her body behind the ball. Makes it look so easy. That's not an easy shot.
You've got to love it. That's just brave yeah. from, a, from a youngster. Unhinged. I love it. There's no, no nerves, no panic. No nerves, no panic, no nonsense. <laughs> you can just see when you do give her a neutral ball and she sets up. Does, it doesn't matter if forehand or backhand. It's just absolute brutality. So clean, so good. Oh. I like that serve, second serve, with a bit of extra pop on it into the forehand. Such an extreme grip she stands there to return with. Oh. That's a great point you bring up, Josh. I talked about it last year. Actually, Iga was very stuck last year in her returning position. It was very good, but when she met somebody on a hot streak with her serving, with their serving, she was just having trouble making ground. And this year, you could see her backing up on that second serve, just giving herself more time, and it pays off. Oh. Here again, she's giving herself a bit more time for that slice wide. It's a, it's a good, it's a good serve. Uh, but, you know, if you're the server, you know that has to go cross court with such an extreme grip. You can't. She, it's near impossible for this to go down the line. I mean, of course you can, but generally this is going to go cross court, so you know where the ball's going to come back to. I just like the difference in where she starts in terms of width with her return position and where she ends up. each other on um, this one Iga was in the right corner and then Linda did such a good job in reading this one here beautiful advantage Moscow Sometimes, right? especially when uh -huh. she's so far, yes. you know, and she like, you know, she goes like she goes ball. like, yeah. yeah. Is that the seagull's fault? It's it loud. sounds quite loud. Yeah, hear it from up here in the comm box. It's that time of the Where's evening. Where's Rufus the hawk? Yeah, that's right at Wimbledon. They have Rufus who scares away the, the pigeons. Return. When the ball is tracking into the body, I like that she moves to the right. That's a, it's an easier return on a, on a double hand as backhand than it is sometimes. I think particularly with her forehand grip, sets it up nicely. She's just com complaining that she's still on the big screen. 
what she doesn't like the look of herself or the the fact that it's distracting possibly Yeah. It was quite distracting. I mean, you, she can see a close-up of her racket as she's learning up to return. I feel like you Nothing can't miss it game out of the line, so yeah. tricky. Laura, how are things looking down there? I feel like Iga's maybe a little stressed. There's a few things that she's bringing up to the chair on by this isn't the first issue that's come up also um, i know you asked her at the end of the last match about the knee and i'm just noticing some bruising above that strap that she's got on where it's clearly been worked on by the physio so a lot of uh, treatment over the last 48 hours perhaps it always seems to be a fair bit of angst or anxiety mm -hmm. going on with shrantek every time she plays even when she you know she's in winning positions I actually see a lot of similarities in terms of mindset with her big idol, Rafa Nadal. He also seems to be driven by that anxiety of losing. I remember him after the 10th time he won Roland Garros. He went out there playing a qualifier and he believed he was going to lose. But that drives them. That's what makes them so sharp and so intense on court. Iga is certainly Early. similar in that regard. You can see here, it doesn't matter whether it's 5-1, 4 all, she will always have the same intensity. She will be annoyed by herself when she misses a, a point or a ball. Let's pursue. That's why she wins so many six love sets, isn't it? Exactly. Game. That's a love service game. Great consolidation Ball there from Igor Shvantec. 5-2 first set. How many times have we seen this sort of set from Shvantec where, you know, someone's able to hang close for the first couple of games and then they're just not able to keep up with her intensity? And you see how consistent Nosva has to be just to hold her own serve. But a few too many double faults for me. I feel like she can get away with going a little slow on of the first serve if she keeps that percentage up because Iga is a little bit further back. Um, and, and just try and play her way into the rallies a bit more. I know she, she feels like she has to go all out. Um, but as we said at the start of the match, sometimes your own game is enough. Mm. No, it's just that I think the constant pressure of taking time away from your opponent, Schwantek time. does it better than anyone. They say that's possibly the biggest bar in the country over Super Saturday. Here they sell enormous amounts of drink and, of course, food and beverage. We've had him here all week. The King of Poland has come out to watch the world number one. 
He's a he's a fan. He's a supporter. He's come all the way out from Krakow, and he loves supporting Schwantek. Fifteen. Left. This is an important game, isn't it? You're down 5-2 and things are happening quickly. You just really want to take care of business and make sure you hold here just to throw a bit of doubt back in your opponent's mind. Well, that was a very good second serve, and I think she almost expected it not to come back. Maybe at all, but definitely not in that way. There was 159 Ks an hour. That is very fast for a second serve. Yep. Pacey. It's got good accuracy when she lands it. That's just 154 kilometers, this one, but it's the accuracy. I like it. A nice bit of shape and slides away off the court. Game. And again, good stuff from the 19-year-old. Just going to ask the question here of Schwantek and Schwantek leads Petko. Five it's games it's always different, isn't it? Uh, he's trying to close out a set or a match. It just has that different feel about it, doesn't it? Yeah, and not a, always necessarily in a bad way. You're just like, okay, now I have to be extra focused. And already that thought of being extra focused can increase the tension. And I think. The secret to playing a perfect tennis game for anybody, whether that's an amateur or a professional, is that balance between tension and relaxation. Too much relaxation is not good. Too much tension is definitely not good. And finding the perfect balance is the challenge. Oh. Ooh. change of direction with Love 15. I wonder if that's maybe a way to move forward in the next you just try, try to change direction before Iga is able to do so it just feels like Iga has been doing that a bit more frequently than Linda Noskova maybe if she can dominate the change of direction it could turn the match around for her Maybe. I just thought if she was out there, she plays it with a lot off the left leg. If she could just be strong enough and pull that down the line. Not an easy shot, though. Laura, just feel this return stance on the second serve, just not having enough time, but a little too close to the baseline. How are you seeing it? I feel exactly the same. I'm wondering if in early second set she makes some changes just to move half a step back, because even on the forehand now, it just feels like she needs to get more in play from the beginning, get herself into the rallies, and as Petko said, open up the line first. I feel like against Eager, you kind of want to be moving up and back all the time, not just sitting on the baseline, giving the, the ball space when you need to, and then immediately moving back inside as soon as there's an opportunity, because she does 
sometimes drop it short and I feel like a lot of people aren't aware of that in the moment and then by the time they get there oh it's already too late Let's pursue. Just yeah, a little long. And Igish Fantek, the world number oh, one here on Super Saturday, has napped the first set six games to three. backwards and forwards with the umpire and you would never know she's just won the first set and it's interesting because she has played already two really tough matches where the crowd was moving around so she should be used to it by now for the players it is i will say it is hard for players especially players like Iga Schwenter who rely so much on the focus and we have the stats here before i talk yeah, that one, that one yes. step there, Petko, 29% of second serve points won. That's killing Linda. That is really killing her, and especially because the first serve percentage is not very high. 56, you might think, that's great, that's good, that's not too bad. But against the best in the world, they're just not good enough, especially not if you barely win points on that second serve because we see winners fairly equal. That unforced error count, I do think, and I wonder what Laura, how Laura sees it because she's closer than we are. It seems to me that when she's either when she gets jammed into the into the body or when she really has to run more than four or five bigger steps, she seems to have trouble in setting up. So a few of the highlights here from set one. Igish Frontek doing it comfortably here. Just the one break, but really did dominate that set. It felt like she was very much the, the better player. What can we expect here from Linda Noskova? Just oh. 19 years of age playing here on Rod Laver Arena. Fifteen. Ball. Noskova won the point, but gosh, you sometimes forget how quick Sean Tech is up to the ball. This one here, sliding on the knee that's uh, been bothering her. Ball. Ball. Second serve. Again, just feeling pressure. It seems to me as she's as if she's almost 
barely using her wrists. She is accelerating with her arm. The arm is fine because the it is speedy that second serve, but she forgets the wrist sometimes. Oh. And it seems to mostly be landing long for her the second serve. Playing back behind. What do you guys think about the elbow on Oscar Vassell? I feel like it comes around quite low and then stays low as she's on the take back. Yeah, it gets a little right there. It gets tucked in a little bit. I'd like to see a fraction, a bit more space where it's a genuine throwing position. Wow. wow. Yeah, and if she just remains a bit too long in that trophy position doesn't get out quickly enough then you can lose the timing on that when you have your elbow so low oh. really needs to be quick out of the trophy position to pull that movement off ah. advantage no scope. Well, you think about how big her first serve could potentially be if she just makes a couple of these tweaks. Okay. Walk and hold there. Just to steady the flow of games here. First, first game, game, second pick serve. Over. Again, if you, I ask you this question all the time, but if you could put your coach's hat on, what would, <laughs> what would, what would your discussion with Linda Nuskova be? So I would tell her on the returns to back off a little bit. The thing that Laura mentioned before, I think that will give her the opportunity to get into the rallies better on Iga Shiantek's serve. And then once she's in the rallies, I do think she needs to use that backhand line that she possesses. And she just, in general, needs to get out of the cross-court rallies before Iga does, because it has felt, the whole side it has felt like Shiantek has been dominating the rallies. And I think the reason for that is that she's been changing directions before Linda. All right. Stunning evening here, Melbourne. Saturday night, day seven here at the Australian Open. We have a packed house here on Rod Laver Arena. You can see to the right there, Margaret Court, also a full house. Plenty of fans in the stands. It's so hard, isn't it, to not play fast all the time against Iga because she, she's rushing you so much, so you want to do the same, but it, it's just almost impossible to beat her at that game. Unless you're Ostapenko. <laughs> oh. to change down the line before her Keep opponent team. Linda Noskova draws the unforced error and you could see beautifully how that backhand down the line it doesn't draw the unforced error right away you're playing the best player in the world but it, it got her a bit of a shorter ball that she was able to set up for and swing through a nice very nicely contested rally here I often think it's a, it's a 30, shame Ash, Ash Barty retired at a young age of 25. Just the contrasting battles they could have potentially had the, the slice and dice of Ash Barty. Mixed with power, of course. I would have loved to have seen those two play off in some big finals. Just the contrast in style. Oh. A 
I sometimes cry in the bathroom thinking of that rivalry, of that potential <laughs> rivalry we've never had. What a loss for the tennis world. I don't think Ash Barty's crying in the bathroom. <laughs> I think she's loving life on the golf course, a young son. Yeah, good on her. Well deserved. Not sure the drop shot is One working game. for her. Laura, what do you think? It's panic button, isn't it? It's I don't want to be in this rally anymore. Let me try something else, but it's not the play that's even if, if it goes over, you think about how far Sviantek is moving forward and how good she slides into the short balls. It's a risky move. For a seat available for now, please. Fifteen. I know it's always hard to tell, but you know, when you're playing world number one here, Linda Noskova, what's her upside, or where, where do you think she potentially gets to, ranking-wise, tournaments, what's best surface, her best chance? Well, you know what, I think the GT hard court and grass will be her best surfaces. I really think on grass she could be super dangerous. And the good th news is that the things that she needs to improve, that she will improve, are all very easily improvable in my opinion. It's the Four movement side to side. Yeah. That's the one thing. If you play the best players in the world and they play quickly left, right, you need to be in better position to be able to hang with them. And the drop shot we saw before Laura mentioned it, there was a cop out. She didn't want to be in the rally anymore because she could feel that she wasn't able to get there physically. Another good service game from Linda Noskova. We're on serve in the second set, 2 1. Two games First set, Schwantek. I am interested though, can you improve someone's physicality or movement at, at, a, at the age of 19 or 20? Of course you can, but is that something that you are either born with or, you're, or you can improve as you, even as you age? That's a very good question. It's a very philosophical question, I would say, almost. Um, so for one thing for me, for example, just to use a personal example, that really helped me, I used to be okay quick not the quickest of all but okay um, and I did a lot of strengthening with squats with lunges a lot of weight work that helped me to become really get that first explosive step and technique wise once I incorporated the crossover from the corner which I didn't use to do yep. it just gave me an extra meter of ground that I covered and that is already Time. a big difference yeah. good point Super Saturday here at the Australian Open, and it's great to have the world number one in the house. It's been a great day's play already. Carlos Alcaraz getting through in the day session.
just to follow on from the chat in the changeover about can you improve 15. your physicality y yes because i wasn't very fast at all um but when i felt like i'd put in a huge amount of work in the gym to be you know half a step quicker i feel like my anticipation improved with it because i wasn't looking i, I wasn't almost looking behind me all the time And I think it improves self-confidence and self-belief. If you're moving better, you're, you're physically better, it just gives you that bit more self-belief in the big moments and confidence. Here we have Iga's coach, Thomas Witkorowski, the man who never smiles, as I like to call him. <laughs> Very nice man off the court, though. She showed us. Laura, are you taking back the drop shot? 30, 50, 50. Not yet. That's that's one. Yeah, Thomas always cracks me up because you see him on the side of the court and you think he looks a little, little bit miserable. But then if he ever messages you, he adds like 10 emojis to every single message. <laughs> was the one yes that I, 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 I suspect she's been waiting to use this on a big point that was it just clips the top of the tape Let's Game. Sun relenting with that intensity it doesn't give you an inch all Two match games. tool second set well and I was holding my breath here a little bit because that was exactly the service game 
in the previous match against Danielle Collins, where things seemed to go wayward for Iga Shiontek. Lost focus, let Danielle Collins back into the match after having won the first set. And thank you. Or there's a really hot second, it looked like she might lose focus again. up to the short balls it's just mesmerizing to watch yeah it's beautiful footwork isn't it and this is the ball when she has a bit of time here clips the tape when it sits there that's why she's so dominant on clay she can take that oh. one down the line when she doesn't have time that will go cross court nine times out of ten Fifteen. Another player who does that tremendously well on the men's side, but only on the forehand, forehand side, interestingly, Stefanos Tsitsipas. If you oh, yeah. ever get the chance to watch him, and just him, how he moves up to those short balls. This is not bad either. No. <laughs> I do think you're right, though. Her game looks good for grass. Mm. I know it's not till the middle of the year on, at Wimbledon, but nice flat ball striker a lot of the time. Good depth. Yeah, beautiful. And she has those serves, the flat mm. ball kick it down the middle on the on the deuce side and the out wide on the advantage side. It's a hard serve for women especially to hit because they are not as tall as men are, of course. Nice set up here. And again, that angled ball really drawing the unforced error when Shriontek gets Noskova on the run. And by on the run, I mean more than four or five big steps. Seems to more often than not extract an unforced error. Yeah. Good accuracy again on serve. Getting herself out of trouble here, Noskova. Yes. She's played a good second set to this point, but you just got to hang on and try and go as deep as you can. Keep holding that serve. It just builds pressure on your opponent. Not easy to read this serve because you've got a very nice ball toss. It gets it in the same location. So as a returner, you, that's what you're probably looking for. Any slight deviations with the ball toss and You'll get to read their patterns. Yeah, just a few forehands yes. from the center of the court that she's missed in this game. Doesn't make enough space. And again, when you jam her or get her on the run, those are the two areas of her game that she can still improve. And then she will be a very, very dangerous player, especially on hard courts and grass courts. Oh. 
already is a very dangerous yeah. player. Yeah, I think it's fair to uh, say we both agree, and I'm sure Laura does as well. Just the, there's a lot of upside still for mm. for Linda in many ways. There's, you know, we, we we forget she's just 19 years of age. Yeah, this is her first Beautiful. Australian Open. Yeah, unbelievable. Just pulls away a little quick, I think, with that left arm, then mm. hence falls back and falls off the shot. Needs to get a bit more weight on that left foot. Advantage, not so. Yeah, that was a great slow motion there to really exemplify what went wrong in that specific shot. Two, second set. Noskova leads three games to two. Well, and uh, Noskova not quite able to make strides on the service games of Iga Shuamtek. She only had she's only had two break points and wasn't able to convert either. And here we see a little bit why. This is the second serve return placement. The return placement after Iga Shuamtek second serve, and you can see how central it is. And that's okay, I don't mind the central return, but how short it is. I think she either needs to find more depth on those returns or go more to the corners. But the combination of central and short just doesn't really put Iga Shiantek into danger after her second serve. Time. Very well said. Thank you. Uh, it's a full house here, and what a pretty spectacle it is. Sun setting here in Melbourne, out over Port Phillip Bay, behind the city there. Igish Frontek, the world number one, trying to get her hands on the Australian Open trophy. Best result is the semi-finalist a few years ago, but in great form here tonight. Let's proceed. Let second serve. from the first three shots where she was in a defensive position to finding that angle right here from the forehand side just stunning Fifteen. Just 
Tips to take that one. A shot from Noskova here, just giving Schwantek very little chance. Pretty good courtside, Laura. Stunning. Played it so well. This was a tricky defensive slice, and then she just held her ground. Didn't really move it at all out for the last backhand. Let us. You feel like that's a big area of Iga's game that could still be improved, the awareness of where to cover at the net. If she's going to start playing more aggressively off the serve and return, and then we know how aggressive she is once the, the rally starts, then you need to anticipate playing at first volley. Yeah, have a good hold here. Three all, second set. Three games. Oh. Well, and Josh, it's Love always her. nice to be right and be backed up by numbers. And we swear we haven't rigged those. And look at this. We've asked Noskova to change the, the down the line a bit more. And she is doing that in the second set. And even though she's down love 30, it did feel like a much closer set. Yeah, I agree. It's a, it's a much better set of tennis here for Noskova. I love 
the the awareness for a young player to make change, almost self-coach themselves out there on court. I, I think that the shows good maturity. Yeah, just a good feeling for the game, right? Mm. She's feeling, I'm playing okay, I'm not playing badly, but somehow I just can't push through right now and adjusts whether that it's by instinct or by a conscious decision, but really great awareness. There are two. And because I'm sitting down here next to Darren and it would almost be a crime not to steal his homework, um, he's just pulled up a graphic uh, on his channel that Noskova is hitting it bigger off the baseline than the match on MCA right now, Medvedev versus Felix Oje Aliasim. Oh, yeah, too good. Good stuff, Laura. Keep stealing all of Darren's work. He doesn't know what he's talking about. <laughs> Hasn't coached anyone decent in his career. <laughs> um, don't worry, I'm taking notes down here. Great stuff here, though, from Igor Schwantek. Look at the shape here. Very yeah. safe. It's a, it may seem close to the line, but that's a very well-measured shot. Iga's forehand from the center of the court is firing on a medium to quick court. I think that sends a message to the rest of the field to beware because Iga is there. There's a forehand heaviness, 7.67, the top 100, just 6.69. That's a massive difference. Ah. And I guess what is forehand uh, heaviness? It's, it's, a, it's a combination of power swing speed what it's doing off the court Second set. Noskova leads four games to three. And I just get the feeling watching Linda Noskova, I can't help but think, imagine Linda as a 12, 13, 14 year old, just great hands, just one of those really talented ball strikers that has great hand eye coordination, knows where her racket head is at all times. A little bit like Martina Hingis back in the day, just very skillful. I thought you were going to say a little bit like Laura Ruffs back in the day. <laughs> she gave us the death stare from I'll take there. it. <laughs> well, that Wimbledon Junior Championships, who will forget? Oh. They had to put it live on TV on the BBC. That was big time, baby. <laughs> I heard she broke the records from One Direction in terms of audience viewership. You know it. Time. Yeah. Sun setting that is back over Port Phillip Bay for sure. And the, the city far away, catch the tram down there. And before we know it, it's that time of the night. But still plenty more to play for before we hit the sack tonight. New balls in play, Iga Schwantek. Well, she played a great first set, and, has, and the match has been of highest of quality, but she just can't quite crack through in this second set. Oh.
This is a this is a great Lovely shot. This feel. is the one that we're sort of wanting more of. Just have a look at the footwork and the space she gives herself. It's just perfect execution. Excellent defense early in the rally. And what a way Love to bring up three break points. What a great save Iga pulled off after that return. That was an incredible return with great depth. But that forehand down the line. That's that extra bit of surprise, right? Normally you everyone else would defend cross court through the center of the court, try to get back in the rally but took a risk and it paid off mightily. Oh, okay. what a brilliance from Moscova. Clean winner. crowd loves it. They want more of this. It's been building, hasn't Moscow it? It Valley feels like she's a bit three. more relaxed out here. Maybe the scoreboard pressure just leaving her shoulders slightly and uh, committing to the backhand line as you guys reflected in the numbers. Fantastic game. Well, all of a sudden, Linda Noskova serving to level this match at one set all. First time Schwantek's lost serve all match. Smart. It's worked well to serve out wide on the first to the forehand. Wow. Thirteen. Just what Laura said, it seems like she's un locked another level of pace in her ground stroke which were already at a very very high pace to begin with oh, come on. 19 years of age this is a big moment in your career here on rod labor arena steps up and goes three bombs to bring up triple set point to do she needs to pick it up played it a bit too conservatively maybe from the middle of the second set 
Also really hard to deal with these fast page paced shots that came at her in the past two games. with the maturity of Linda Noskova. Very little fuss about how she goes about her work. I really admire that. Yeah, and just the, I always love to see when players are aware, whether that is by instinct or by a conscious analyzing of the game, but she clearly saw there was no way through how, the way she played in the first set. And we see it here, the first serve, 68 percent the second serve points one up to 54 remember that was below 30s in the first set winners picked up and this is what i meant by i think Iga played the last four few games granted nosco was playing very well played them a bit too conservatively maybe didn't quite go for some risks and Noskova just ran away with the winner count and ran away with that second set and i think it's really time for Iga to try and go for a bit more risk i think she's feeling the ball much better than she did against danielle collins and i think she can afford to just try a bit more here yeah a couple of couple of interesting points i mean of course the serve is the most important shot in tennis and that highlighted it with those numbers and great serving from muscular Some of the highlights here of set two, dominated by Linda Moskova and the first serve, a lot more effective. And I'm not so sure what you think, both of you, Laura and Andrea, I've got a feeling that Petkovic, I mean, sorry, I think Iga Svantec probably felt that she didn't play that poorly in that set. I think she's, she'd be quite happy with how she's hitting the ball. Andrea would love to be confused yes. with I would be, I would, with never her, even, I with her never back even balance. Close. I was never even close to that level of tennis. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm with Petko. I just feel like maybe she thought it was just about done and dusted and, and took a bit of pace off the ball. Not much, very small margins, but it just allowed Noskova to have a bit more space to go for the forehand in particular. And we know that the backhand line is lethal, but when you hit a few of those in a row and you gain some confidence and you start swinging so much more freely, um, then you can just carry on with that momentum. So she's sitting down here looking awfully relaxed and no dramas. It's, it's whether now she can keep this level up, to be honest, because it's a different ball game. If you're set down and you're trying to get it to a third, when you're in the third, then I think the mentality be becomes more of a, a factor. She had a similar um, match involvement in, at the US Open. I called that match. She played on Jabeur in the second round. Very similar, actually. Also had one set where she was playing lights out, the much better player overpowering odds and then in the third set just held back a bit again and lost it 3-6 in the end so exactly what laura says if she but the thing is she has had that match she's played that match yeah. she knows what it feels like to do that so today she has the opportunity to write that error that she maybe did error this is a very harsh term but Learning to maybe adjust Learning, yeah. exactly maybe to adjust a bit Good spot to be. Laura Robson will head out there a little later. It's her birthday tomorrow, everyone. Yeah, show, I have show, to tell as many people as possible. Show her some love. <laughs> what a spot this is here. This is around the grounds. You can sit there and watch all the action on the big screen. They've got screens everywhere to watch so much entertainment. And they are loving life down there on Grand Slam Oval. You called it the biggest bar in yep. the country. You haven't been to my bar. <laughs> <at> my house. <laughs> Can't wait. <laughs> Was that an invitation? I think it is. 
I'm just expecting a cake from Laura tomorrow in the green room. That's all <laughs> I care about. I'm looking over at Noskova, who's gone over to her coaching box um, to have a proper in-depth chat here. And they all seem very relaxed. She's kind of laughing at what they're saying. Well, they coach Thomas Krupa, one of the most relaxed blokes you will ever meet. He's been with so many great players over the journey. Well, and next to him is David, David, the former coach of Petra Kvitova. They've been swapping. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and they've been in a very long partnership. I think both Wimbledon titles Petra Kvitova was able to win came with him by her side. So the Czech, always a tightly knit team with great coaches. You, every year there is a new 17-year-old oh, on the horizon, so it seems. been five minutes. Iga Shiontek is back. Time. Final set. Final set. Frontek will be serving first. Frontek is over there with her camp. Yeah, it must seem like deja vu a little bit to Iga Shantek. We had a similar thing happen to her against Danielle Collins, who just went on a red hot streak out of nowhere. And so did Linda Nosko in these last three games. Boy, was that level of play incredible. Yeah. You analyzed it so beautifully in the beginning of the match, Josh. We see it here, 184 Ks an hour. You guys have been serving those numbers quite regularly in 2024, and she hasn't been doing that last year. Four kilo. It's just so seamless, right? That's yeah, easy, isn't it? When you've got such great timing and look, look at this strong, meets it out in front. Very still upon impact. The mm. head doesn't move. There's so many things to like about it. Frontech sends a message to her opponent that she will not first go away easily. It's funny because in the first set we were 
suggesting to Noskova to move back for the return, but the way that she's seeing the ball now, she's seeing it like a football. So, yeah, that's the moment where you can cut the angle off and take everything inside the baseline when it's available to you. Uh, because once you feel that you're in the zone, you want to keep it going for as long as possible. Let's just take a look at Win Predictor here. Eh? That can't be right. Oh. Yeah. No. That cannot be right. I think they messed, they mixed up the names. Yeah. Even if they messed up the names, that's pretty savage. <laughs> yeah, especially after that set Linda Noskova has played. Take that ball a little bit earlier and hold your hold your position on the baseline. Look what's possible. Not easy to do though. Here it looks like she just played a bit faster in this point right there. Yep, yeah, you see the difference. Noskova gets out of position, and that's where it exposes her movement out wide a little more. It was interesting before the last point though, Sviantek a bit annoyed at herself because she's running to cover the forehand line mm. and then realizing actually most of the time those could be going forehand cross and then backhand line. Ah. Almost Four telling herself to just hold her ground a bit more. Whether now is the time for Iga to take half a step back on that first serve that's been landing in so well. 75% winning percentage on that first serve just to give herself a bit time to get in the rally, make the young teenager play. for it on the biggest of stages one all let's just take a look at the the real win predictor that was just a little bit of a glitch i suspect and there you see it pre-match it was 88 percent now it's back to 77 so good respect win predictor showing linda noskova here in this one still a bit savage for me given how given how well, Noskova yeah. is playing. She's just ripped an inside in forehand winner. Well, that's the problem with AI. They don't see what <laughs> we see, they just see the numbers. And the numbers sometimes don't tell the story in between the lines. Oh. 
Love 15. Opportunity here at Love 30. Fifteen forty. This trouble. We'll break points. Got an upset on the cards brewing here, Petco. Uh, the last few games, Linda Noskova has looked absolutely impenetrable. So solid, so unfazed, compact in her ground strokes. And yet, the result has been absolutely stunning because, as Laura pointed out, with a stat that she stole from her neighbor, Darren Cahill, sending kind regards. Linda Noskova has been hitting the ball, ball harder than Medvedev and Oji Eliasim on Margaret Court. That's where we are here on Rod Laver Arena. And I think that's the scary part, that it doesn't look like she's training to generate that pace. It looks like she's just comfortable and hitting. She is. Yeah, so much freedom. And well, we must check in with Laura because she's broken too early in the set. Remember oh, Laura Robson. Right, the side. Laura Robson theory. Just, just thinks you, you shouldn't break too early in the set. Just a little bit of help required here for one of the fans in the stands. Yeah, I can see it. Ladies and gentlemen, dealing with it pretty quickly. Paramedics are right on the case, so hopefully, nothing too serious. I feel like I want to take back my theory. Well, you can't do that. You well, I know. I, I, deep down, I want to stick to it because I still believe it, but it feels like no one else agrees with me. <laughs> you can't take a theory back that's been named after you. Mm. So it looked like 
be underway shortly here. You just think, what is there to talk about here? I feel like the last two games in particular, it's really unbelievable play off Moskova's racket rather than anything that Iga's done really wrong. Sometimes you just have to wait it out and hopefully wait for your opponent's level to drop slightly. Yeah, because the two missed forehands to go down left 30, those were off crushing returns from the other side, so. Good news. All is okay with the patron, just a being well looked after here. And we're gonna be underway here. And that is the way to go, right? If you can't make any ground, you have to strike first. Yep, that's that. Get on the front foot, get a little more aggressive mentality that you both are oh. looking for from the world number one. That is very, very good. Chapeau, Iga Shviantek. Love her. Picking it, it up nicely here. Hitting through the court, swinging freely. Hasn't she Love used the break well? Hundred forty five Ks an hour was the speed of this last return. Oh. Fifteen forty. Break straight back. That's a great game. A lot more aggression in the Shvantec return. Two games of unbelievable response. I, I'm wondering now, you know, when uh, Petko, you have felt this, when you feel like you're hitting it big and then it takes someone on the side of the court to say, actually, no, you're not. You need to go for more. Mm. And that's instantly what she was doing there. But that mistake shows you, I don't think that mistake happens if Iga doesn't hit as decisively yep. in the previous ground stroke. And that is the difference, and that's exactly what Laura just mentioned. Sometimes you need somebody to just be like, no, you can hit decisively with security. There are team.
Yeah, you, you just have to be really careful here because, you, of course, you want to hit it big, but to execute it, it's not that simple. And secondly, I think Noskowit doesn't mind pace. So if you do not get it right in those locations, she can burn you. the ball without losing security yeah. without hitting too many unforced errors without giving too many gifts to the opponent trigger down the line from a defensive position and what a time to be alive for us <laughs> look at this completely off the court break point down it takes a lot of self-belief doesn't it a lot of hours of practice Left for seven. Left for seven. Such a big difference, isn't it? When Schwanta gets that first serve in, 185 kilometer an hour first serve, it just sets it up to let her game just flow beautifully. Stuff here from the world number one. Gets back in front. 3 2. Final set. Well, it's a good response. A champion's response, as you would expect. Third round action here. A nice job in sticking with it, right? She picked up the pace, made a few unforced errors, but realized that was the way to go against a streaking Linda Noskova, hitting the ball so cleanly, seeing it as big as a football, as Laura Robson said. Just backing herself in this regard. The, that break point sa save just shows you. Yeah. The self-belief, the, the confidence. The self-belief, exactly. That shot there. Rod Laver Arena on the right. Left is the the player pod where you can relax Time. as a player. Plenty of great food options.
just past 9 p.m. here local time in Melbourne and two players putting on a fabulous show here Higesh Fantek the world number one she's fighting hard here we're on serve 3-2 final set Let go, just get the feeling. It's going to come down to who can serve best for the remainder of this set. And by that, I mean first serve. First serve is such a key. If you can get around 65 to 70% of first serves in with how well both of these guys serve, I think that will be the deciding factor. Especially because this third set has kind of crystallized into who can strike first, who can be the first one to step on that gas pedal, put the other one under pressure. And of course, the first serve is a first strike by nature. Uh, that was way too over explained. First serve <laughs> is a first serve. <laughs> I know what you mean. There we go. 14, I mean, 15. these girls, with, with how well they, they serve, it almost gives them. One to two free points every service game. That's how well they serve. 62% for Noskova. Shvantec 67%. Look how low she gets, that's mm. great footage of just how low the players get. Okay, not going. That serve to the forehand is working a treat for Linda Noskova. Three games. And I still go on record thinking that Iga Shiante could take half a step back on that first serve. It is a very big serve. Yep. And she likes to hit through it. Yes, she can hit that slice, but she likes to hit, I think she prefers to hit through the court. And that half a step will give you a bit more time and space to react to it. Get it in through the center of the court with good depth. And yeah, hope for the best. That's that, what I used to do. That's the first thing, isn't it? The first rule. Get that first serve back in play, then look to strike. A 
I tell you what, that second serve was back of the line and it felt like Iga maybe thought it was long because she didn't move out to the next plus one shot as quick as she normally does. Yeah, just desperately needs a first serve now. What's happened to the body service the first serve? If you're trying to keep the first serve percentage high, that is, that's the go-to. Trap Noskova up on the backhand side, get it kicking up into her body. Oh. There to be had. Thank you. Ah, that was the first time I felt like she hesitated just a bit. This is the smallest amount. No, I agree. Just she knows it as well. Oh. Two in a row. It was in the air, right? There is just that bit of hesitation. It just comes to show you how small the margins are between teeing off on everything and just missing those two backhands. They were still good shots. She still has very nice technique, but that tad bit of hesitation makes all the difference in the world. Oh. Find a first serve at the moment here, yeah. Frontek. I 100% believe that the first serve there needed to go kick to the back end again, mm. make her play a third one in a row. Time violation warning, Miss Shrimpton. <laughs> I just 
is to me just mind blowing yes. the audacity to go down the line on that on that one and pull it off just take me out of here well again this this shot is the hardest shot to hit changing direction of any ball that comes at you cross court and the young 19 year old is just hanging in there fearless this is such a good contest Gets it. What a game from Linda Noskova. Moves ahead 4 3 with a break. Final set. Noskova leads the four games to three. All righty. Here we are. Hawkeye. Taking a look at Noskova, first serve placement on the first court, you will see hitting that serve out wide. That's just working a treat tonight into the Shvantec forehand. And I just think you just got to keep doing that, keep going. Very little serves into the body, which I find interesting. I think that's something that Linda can eventually get to a little better. And that's really interesting. I, I think that first serve, particularly on the juice court, 87% of first serves into that side hit doing so much damage tonight and she's only got a hold serve twice can she get there Hi in the sky here looking down onto one of the most famous courts in world tennis rob laver arena where we have an upset brewing Linda Noskova, 4-3 up, final set, with a break. And I Thank don't you. need to speak Polish to know that Iga just looks like she's complaining about the first serve to her coach, Thomas, off to the side before this game starts. Well, took a little pace off, just 150. It was a slider into the body and probably got the ball she was looking for. It's a ripper of a play, but Iga's got to find a way to slow this down now, to actually help Nozgova out with the nerves. You've got to force her to play an extra shot. If it's coming into her racket all the time, she's not going to feel it. Made every single 
good first serve. Linda Noskova. Ice cool. Ice cool. And just keep in mind in the first set, Linda Noskova kept five games going three. back cross court with that backhand. And she's changed her game plan up since that second set. She's turned this match around. And this game alone, three backhands down the line to go up 5 3 in the third set. Can the world number one come back from this? Josh, what do you think? It's a big ask. The, the way this will be a free swing here for Linda Noskova, she will continue to go for it. Now Iga needs to find that first serve that she's been complaining about. Maybe keep her head just a tad bit higher. The chin, she sometimes tends to pull the chin down. And if you do that at home, you will see how the tension in your abdominals leaves you right away. Ball. It's a champion's response, isn't it? Holds comfortably. Linda Noskova a chance five games to three. serve for the match. Is she going to do it? Well, Laura, you are the closest of all of us. You well, have to tell us. I feel like for Linda, yes, I think she believes she can, but Iga could make this awfully difficult for her if, if she forces herself to make every return in play, move further back, like we've been saying, and just hustle it out for a couple of points and, until maybe Linda starts to feel a little nervous, because this is a huge win, should she get over the line here. Monumental upset brewing here. Virginia Rizucci from Romania. Is the only top seed to lose before the fourth round. That was back in 1979. And she actually lost first round. So this is a huge upset brewing. Mm. Melbourne at its absolute finest. Another epic here on Rod Laver Arena. Doesn't get any better where we're seeing a teenager, 19-year-old, Linda Noskova, trying to dethrone the world number one. Love 
Yeah, great defense though from Moskova. That's the one, Laura. Ball. She's got the line, the back of the line, twice in these two points. And so did Noskova. What a brave second serve. So deep. Wow. That's a freebie. Just needs to settle here. Moscow will find that first serve again. And this is the side I would take a half a step back if I was Iga Shiantek. We know Moscow loves the slice out wide on the do side, but here she goes for big. Let's hear from Laura Robson, courtside with Linda Noskova. Linda, congratulations. This is your first time in the main draw of the Australian Open and you've just beaten the world number one. How does that feel? Um, I mean, I'm speechless, obviously. I knew it's going to be uh, an, an amazing match with world number one and such a player, but I didn't really uh, think that it would end up like this. But um, I'm just really, I'm just really glad to get through this round. Yeah, you can, you can be very happy after that one. <laughs> 
And I want to talk about how you felt at 5-4 there, trying to serve out the match. How were the nerves? Were you shaking a little bit? It seemed like you were overcome with emotion after the handshake, but what was it like on the first point? Um, I was a little shaking. Um, obviously, I didn't hit uh, two first serves, which was not uh, the best start for me, but um, I pulled out an ace and... Uh, uh, Easy when you do that. Yeah, well, it's easier like that, but uh, it's tough sometimes to bring it such a score. Yeah, it seemed like you were so tactically aware of what was happening tonight. We noticed through the match that you started to go more with your backhand line. Was that all you, or were you getting some help from your coach? You can take all the credit if you like. You don't have to say that it was him. <laughs> no, it was a teamwork. Team makes dream, <laughs> makes dream work, right? Um, no, but they helped me a lot. They, um, they were supporting me, and I'm just really glad that I can have this for all of us. You definitely had so much support in the crowd tonight. As the match went on, I feel like I heard some let's go Aussie Linders. Are you happy with that? Are you ready to take on that role? I'm ready, like say, just say so. So thank you guys so much for the support. It was amazing to play here for the first time. Give up for Linda Notskova through to the second week of the Australian Open. Thank you guys, thanks so much. Almost disbelief from the teenager. Wow, what a performance. That was an incredible performance. And I thought she was already playing quite well in the first set. Yeah. But then she was... <laughs> I, I, I don't have words for we, this. We've got to call a few more matches together. Every match we call, that is so the true. tennis has been just fantastic. And what a future. Just 19 years of age, she has certainly arrived, and there's no doubt we will see a lot more from Linda Noskova in the immediate future. I'm just so impressed with under pressure to have to get out and serve that, that last service game. Those things are so hard to do. But she did it comfortably with so much self-belief. Yeah, and the most impressive thing to me for a 19-year-old to make that adjustment to game plan. She credited her team, but still, you need to be able to execute. You need to be able to yep. have the courage to implement yeah. it against the world number one. And here we have it, the stats that speak the I think, narrative. I think the, the big difference there... The first serve, yes, at 63%, but Linda Noska was only in the mid-50s, and the second serve points one was below 30. Under so 30, I think yeah. the serve in the second and third set for me, Petko, made a big difference. And how many times do you think Iga Shiantek lost the match where she was plus one? She yeah. hit, she's hit more the wins. winner more than unforced yeah. errors. Yeah, you wouldn't lose too many matches when you're in the, in the positive there. So what a performance from Linda Noskova knocking out the world number one two hours and 20 minutes of sheer brilliance i don't know <laughs> what did i do um it's cute isn't it it's never got to sign the lens never been out here on center court it's the first australian open is she writing Time Flies? I would feel very upset if a 19-year-old <laughs> writes Time Flies there. First time. First time. Yay! Well done. It's different, right? The motto of the Australian Open. Yeah. First time feels different. What a bright spark as well to have the clarity to write that. All right, Petko, let's have a look at the draw. Moves through to the fourth round. Now this section right here has fallen completely apart. The only former champion we have or former finalist is Vika Azarenka. She's played an incredible match today, so watch out for her. But the highest seed in the top half is Ching Wen Zhong right now. Yeah. She's played great too today, but this 
half is for anyone's taking and whoever can get through can really make some strides. Yeah. Yep. Azarenka, the two-time Australian Open champ, is the only Grand Slam champion still alive in that section. Well, what a fabulous evening we've had here on Rod Laver Arena. Star has emerged. We've heard so much about this young lady, Linda Noskova, over the last 12 months. She broke through in Adelaide a year ago to make the final, but she has done it even better here tonight. She has knocked out the reigning world number one, Iga Svantec. Linda Noskova moves through to the fourth round here at the Australian Open. What a performance it was.
There he comes, a man that's uh, just about to stride out onto the Rod Laver Arena, looking to make the round of 16 for the fifth time. He has experience on his side, and he has a big team around him as well. There's his brother, Misha. Sasha Zverev now 26 years of age, semi-finalist here in 2020. Up against somebody perhaps that you haven't seen or heard of before, Alex Mickelson. This has been a extraordinary journey over the last 12 months. He had committed to go to the University of Georgia in the middle of last year, but a final visit at Newport at the ATP event there where he came second best to Adrian Manorino, put those plans on hold and he decided to turn pro. He broke into the world's top 100 before the end of the year, having started 2023 outside the world's top 500. Meteoric rise as he is about to enter one of the great show courts in all of tennis. What a moment for the 19-year-old American. It's men's singles. Third round action here on Rod Labour Arena. Please welcome from the United States of America, Alex Mickelson. Top tenner is Sasha, and that will be the first time that Mickelson has take to, taken on a, a top tenner in his career. The highest player that he's ever played was Hugo Humbert, and he came off second best against the Frenchman, who was ranked 20 at the time, but a fabulous win over Lehechka has put him in this position. Just his second ever Grand Slam for the American. First coming last year at the US Open, reached the second round there. Could be the youngest man to reach the round of 16 here in Australia since 2012. But Atomic was that particular person. And he was 19 years old Sasha, and 100 we're days. With coin toss. Right. Gentlemen, before we start, please, at the end of a coin, at the end of a coin toss, stay here with Taylor facing that way for a photo. Uh, Sir clocks in four corners. Uh, just a reminder, spectators are coming in after each game. That is not the reason that you shouldn't be ready to start the serve, all right? Uh, if you need bottles to be refilled, ask ball kids, give them a little bit of time. Uh, towels, uh, blue, red, that's it. If you need anything, something wrong, let me know. Any questions, guys? No? Alex, AO or Yvonne? AO. AO? Taylor. Uh, Sasha, receive? receive? Yep. That way. Go. Uh, yeah. Well done. Sasha takes a familiar walk back to the baseline on the Rod Laver Arena. As I said, semi finalist here in the past for Alex Mickelson, just taking a step into the unknown. But it looks as though the 19 year old is unfazed by pretty much everything. Noticed by Brad Gilbert at the start of the year when he was playing some futures up in Malibu in January. Brad was uh, very quick to notice the potential. Nothing gets past Brad Gilbert in terms of tennis. Said that this guy was going to do a Brian Shelton and get himself into the world's top 100 before the end of the year. And as ever, Brad absolutely on the money, as you can see here, playing at 91 in the world. And a singles record on the tour, seven wins, the 10 losses. Brad Stein, who would have had a tough day at the office today, of course, because Tommy Paul had a couple of match points against Ketsmanovic as he tried to back up his semi-final from here, once said of this man that he is impressively 
unimpressive. And I think that will be uh, something that will catch your eye at the start of this match is uh, what does he do that's very good? And everybody's going to try and take a, a little look because he is a, a pretty unique player. There are a couple of similarities out here as well, as we see uh, his coach, Eric Diaz, on the left of your picture there. There's Byron Manning, the strength and conditioning coach from Australia. He played tennis as a junior. Eric Diaz is the son of Manny Diaz, of course, who has been a legendary coach at the University of Georgia, where John Isner spearheaded the team to the NCAA title in 2007. Manny also won it in 99, 2001, and 2008. He starts his 36th season over there for the Bulldogs as we take a, a quick whisk through Sasha's bio. And it's been a great comeback for him, obviously, after the ankle surgery that he sustained from that fall in the semis against Rafa in that contest, which potentially could him at, put him at world number one. But Eric... His coach, Alex Mickelson's coach, ended up going to Boise State. And to learn under Greg Patton, uh, obviously being around his dad, who had tried to coach him for quite a bit. He went to Boise State for a year uh, and then went over to South California and open his own club and first place he went to was kind of a rundown derelict place rented the courts and they just got a whole program going i think and i'm not sure if he's plugged in right now that uh, nick munro is with us and it's just been if you are nick it's just been a, it's been a fabulous story to watch and follow in tennis in the last 12 months yeah, Patch, it absolutely has. I mean, <laughs> Alex Mickelson is, is one of those guys who reminds me a lot of Taylor Fritz. You know, it's a guy that's not scared to play anybody. Uh, I was just with him in the players' locker room before coming out here, and he was joking One around. Minutes. He was watching the Sviatek match, Dimitrov. He was smiling, having a good time. Um, you know, he's also coached, as you mentioned, Eric Diaz. He has another coach, Jay Levitt. So those two run an academy in Orange County. So he's been there for about six, seven years, and there's another player there by the name of Lerner Tien. They got a wild card in the U.S. Open, so they have two really great players coming out of the academy in Orange County. But again, one, one thing about Mickelson is he is not scared of anybody, and he loves a big-time occasion. Yeah, Lerner's obviously done seconds. exceptionally well as well. Um, one back-to-back -back USGA boys under 18 at Kalamazoo was a finalist here in the juniors in 2023. Ladies and gentlemen, this match will be played best of five tiebreak sets. Mickelson has something very much Rizzi. in common with Sasha Zverev. They are both naturally lefties, but have chosen to play this sport right-handed. Sasha plays golf left-handed. Alex Mickelson is also a lefty. Used End to pitch in softball left-handed, and he kicked with his left foot as well, but has uh, played tennis right-handed he will tell you that he is a left-hander so that is one thing that is very familiar but also kind of strange because you would think in tennis terms if you could play with your left hand ultimately you would as we see melbourne almost look like a monet painting tonight it is absolutely spectacular here It was a big decision to forego college. His uh, dad is a, an attorney, First his mum a school teacher. They six. were very keen for him to go to college. Lots of conversations after the final in Newport about putting it on hold. Alex, Alex won that. Ready? Play. Nick, I'm not sure how much you've seen of Sasha at this particular tournament, but that forehand has looked just a, a little bit ropey. Yeah, you're right, Pet. Just looked a little bit ropey, and Alex Mickelson has one of the best backhands down the line in the world in your case tonight. So I think with that backhand down the line, he's really going to try to go into the forehand of Sasha Zverev, see how many short balls he can get. And he's not afraid to come to the net, Mickelson. He's very solid at the net uh, with that long wingspan, tough to pass.
Go on, Fitzgerald with me. Well That's done for making it up you. nice and quickly. I think you had to go out and just be a little busy, Thank meet you. your fans. Uh, not so much that, Pitch, no. Or fan, sorry. Just, just did one fan. Just a little cross there down after that uh, shocker in the in the previous women's match where it, it shocked all of us, I think. What a player uh, Linda is. And to lose the number one seed is a big, big deal. 14, 15. He gets Fiontech. So, on to the men. Keen to see this young lad. I lived in Newport Beach for five years in the in the late 80s, long time ago. Long time oh. before this lad was born, but uh, what a beautiful spot and it's dear to my heart. So, great to see a young player come out of there. Going to have to go long against yes. her, and it was going to be interesting to see that backhand to backhand exchange, as Nick said, is something that is strong on both sides of the net tonight. Both will back themselves. Quickly on the forehand, though, can't he? Already in this first game, he's changed the, the speed of that uh, several times. That's a, a good indication of someone who can do some damage that he really unloads on that one. But Sasha's come out with plenty of attempt on that forehand yes. side. It's been suboptimal in his opening couple of matches. He's kind of had to grind his way through to this stage. But plenty of attempt. about Mickelson Nicholson. is that he played in the next gen final in Jeddah and then he had to, actually had to get his wisdom teeth pulled out and so he didn't have a long preseason just about a week uh, he played three days in Carson practice sets Carson California close to LA practice sets with uh, Taylor Fritz Marcos Garon and he just didn't have a long preseason but he's playing some amazing tennis now oh. You obviously know all the American players. I'm just wondering if you could kind of like think about who he reminds you of, but I think you'd have to be across of a few. I mean, obviously, Jensen Brooksby, who's out at the moment, kind of comes to mind when I watch him play. Yeah, that's a good comparison. He actually had a two hand backhand volley, and for a very long time, until about a year ago, um, you know, they've been working a lot on his neck game. And, you know, but he reminds me so much of Taylor Fritz, just as far as such a solid backhand. Uh, his belief in himself is off the charts, which is what you love to see. And that's exactly why he's in this position as well. He just feels like he can compete with anybody and he loves the big stage, is also similar to Ben Shelton. Help! 
Tetino. Always feel that it's big advantage, of course, for Sasha to come out on a court like this. He's been here so many times, but the one advantage, of course, for Alex is the fact that uh, Sasha won't have seen him play all that much. reason why you know he's blossomed as fast as he has he actually right after covid he played a bunch of utr events in the state so like twenty five thousand dollar tournaments he played about 70 matches in six months and he just kept winning and winning and winning and that's why he has this belief Forty, fifty. That might be the separator for them tonight, the first serves of these two. Three points, unreturned serves. It's already about a 13-kilometer difference in terms of top speed on average between the two first serves. Game's over. Yeah, there's another one that's drilled through the middle of the court. And we've seen Zverev serve like this wow. for three weeks now. Game There's been no chink in the armor there, has there? He's he's. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, one reminder: behind the players, please switch off flesh. Thank you. All of the big matches he's played that we've seen at the United Cup and here so far, when it really matters, he's served well and his percentage is high, and you need to be able to get that back. They're letting everyone in, yeah, and then we deal with it. All right. Yeah, we're having uh, fans coming in in between games, and it seemed like Sasha Bear was a little upset with that. And there's been some other players that almost didn't even know that that was kind of a new rule. So it's interesting to see. Love it. I think all the players are, uh, are informed, aren't they, really? They, they all know this is happening. It's new. It's just a bit hard for them to get used to immediately. Oh. Doesn't look to, in the early stages. I've never seen uh, this play before live. So um, Nickel obviously knows him a lot better than me. But the first part of this match so far, um, I, I wouldn't think he'd he'd want to be defending too much, Nick, against the power of Zverev. I mean, he, he hasn't looked that comfortable when uh, Zverev has attacked him. Let's. Yeah, you're right. First you know, look, he definitely looks to try to take offense more so off of his backhand, the backhand on the line. The forehand is a side they've really been working on. But if you can attack that side, he starts to get a little antsy there at times. Ball. Fifteen foot. Yeah, just uh, looking over to his coach there, Eric, Zverev just wondering leads. about where the technique went on that forehand, but it's a sharp start from Sasha 2-1.
Natasha doing a good job of not allowing the 19 year old to be comfortable out in these unfamiliar circumstances and stadium and he's done a, a really good job there of getting that nice quick early break and he'll also be wanting to put in a bit more polish on his own performance given what he kind of did in his opening couple of rounds Sasha bidding to become the second German in the open era to reach the round of 16 here in Australia on five or more occasions. Boris Becker made six appearances in the round of 16. Sasha just walks over to the official there, has a little word. He uh, disappears down the tunnel. Not entirely sure what that's all about. And it will come as no great surprise to anybody that after an early break, a man with this kind of quality of serve goes on generally to win it. Looks like Mickelson there trying to quickly get out of the backhand to backhand exchange, but uh, he's going to have to respect the quality of shot from Sasha. Not easy to redirect from there. Yeah, it was, it, it was interesting on the changeover. Uh, Mickelson was looking over at his coach, Eric Diaz, and just kind of made the, um, the motion with his wrist on the forehand to say, should I be coming over it more? And he kind of said, yeah, you know, give it a little bit more topspin. So we'll see if he tries to get a little bit more height over the net and shape on that forehand. Quick baptism of fire here for Mickelson in terms of not just quality of first serves from Zverev, but also quantity. Missed just one so far. Forty, fifteen. face there at the last second didn't he we, he held the held the racket face out in front of him and then just adjusted it as he got close to the net there's a bit of talent there So good at using angles, Mickelson. 
Yes. Question is, is, can he get into enough returning points on Sarah's serve to be able to use that kind of quality that he has? Almost half of the German serves haven't come back so far. Beautiful movement through that volley from Zverev. You see a lot of people kind of get stuck with their feet, but he just kept coming. Well, his brother knew what to do when he came up to the net, didn't he? He was a, he was a very good volleyer. Older brother. Sitting there in the box. Misha. Misha on the right. Dalibor Cirola is uh, back right, is uh, fitness trainer. <laughs> Next to Alex yes. Mikhail Ladovsky. He's uh, also helping Sasha in terms of his tennis. He's got a big brains trust there in the front row. They're all looking at that screen that Tennis Australia provide for the teams to be able to see what's going on. Christoph Seller, physio top left, his girlfriend Sophia. They have platoons these days, not even entourages. <laughs> well, the top players do, because they can afford it. That gap's closing, yeah, though, is. if you... I, I hope so. It feels like it with the... The uptick in terms of prize money at the majors and obviously even on the tours there's been a big increase it does feel as though when you look at a lot of the close matches that we've had here in australia that the wealth gap is somewhat closing good to hear <laughs> tough hold gritty and hold Sverev doesn't mind those type of service games Zverev leads three games to one. Yeah, Alex, Alex Mickelson, I like seeing him kind of on that second serve a couple points ago to save game point for Zverev. He took that forehand early and put it back on Zverev. And, you know, I think just putting pressure on that second serve of Alex Zverev will be important throughout this match. And we'll see how much he tries to take time away. I was speaking with the USA coach, Mark Lucero. He's here with Amanda Anasimova, and he said, you know, he was used to be coaching Steve Johnson. He was looking for somebody for Steve to hit with, and everyone was like, you need to hit with this 15-year-old. So, yeah, everyone was telling him he would hit with this 15-year-old Alex Mickelson. He'd be a great hit for Steve Johnson. And he was kind of like, wait a second, Steve Johnson with a 15-year-old? And that was when Stevie was top 50 in the world. And sure enough, this guy was hitting the ball big. And then he started hitting with Sam Query, Taylor Fritz, when he was 15 years old. And so a lot of the Americans have known about him for a while. The, words, the world is starting to find out. Oh. Stuff there. He's got good awareness of space. Yeah. Fitzy. Yeah. Yeah, I like that move. Fitzy. 
I want to ask you what you were doing at 15, but I'm not sure I want to hear the answer. Uh, I wasn't playing tennis this well. <laughs> 40, 15. Let's put it back on Patch. What were you doing when you were 15, Patch? <laughs> yeah, fair question. <laughs> uh, I can't, sorry, no comment. Yeah, I can take the fifth. I've got an American on commentary. <laughs> you know I'm going to bring it back to you. <laughs> Stays in touch. So important to do that for the 19-year-old. Zverev has broken free, but not by too far so at the moment. 3-2. Three, two. three games to two. Done a great job, uh, Eric, in terms of what he uh, actually created out there on uh, the west coast of America. It's, uh, it's not easy to break out on your own. We were chatting a little bit about the fact that he didn't, uh, he didn't stay under his dad for too long. Manny Diaz, he went out to Boise State to train under Greg Patton, who had heard of so many good things about, and then took the risk to get out to Southern Cal, uh, started renting on some courts that nobody wanted, made it super cheap. The kids came, Nick, um, and they kind of brought their mates, and, and it kind of sort of snowballed from there in terms of what he did and then he stepped up i believe he runs a, a club called koto tennis club in Irwin right now um, and in the last year five of those kids have gone on to ivy league schools from his program as well i mean that is pretty impressive to develop kids from a tennis perspective but then to send five or get five to the stage where their education is solid enough with, along with their tennis to go to Ivy League is super impressive. Zverev came through a slightly different vector, of course. His dad played on the Pro Tour. Misha was playing. He was uh, hanging around in locker rooms, getting hits with the top players. His future was destined or predestined a lot earlier than Alex's. players that have gone to Ivy League schools and I quickly mentioned another player Lerner Tien he's ranked 473 in the world right now he won Kalamazoo which are 18 and under national hardcores get a wild card in the US Open so he's a young player lefty you're gonna be hearing a lot about him as well he and Mickelson train together Trying to find his feet out here at the moment. So we're very quick to condense the space on the court here, not to give too much room for Mickelson to find his range and rhythm. This guy is just listening to his feet when he's moving side to side and hearing screeching as he's sliding into that running forehand. And, and look, I'm looking at him right now. He's got a smile on his face. There's no tension. He's literally enjoying this entire moment.
this is good. Yeah. How good is that backhand he's, down the line? He's, he's, he's accurate with it, isn't he? It's your... Yeah, I mean, that's a shot that he can literally hurt anyone in the world with. You know, I compare it a little bit to, you know, Benoit Paire has a great backhand backing down the line, but Mickelson takes it so early and can put it right on the line, barely clearing the net. It's, it's, impre it's in impressive. Response from Zverev. 40, 30. I like that play though. I love that play from uh, young Alex. That, that was that was fantastic. He got the he got the forehand that he probably wanted, and something different took it on a big point down the line. Zverev will be thinking about that next time it's 30 all. It took a great chip across court to get out of trouble there. Oh. Just lost a bit of rhythm on his serve. Yeah. He hasn't found his feet either, I don't think. He's found his forehand, and that has been a significant shift through the gears. For Zverev here at Zverev the Australian Open after his scrappy with... couple of rounds. Look at this. Rounds one and two on that forehand side. He was sitting at 124. He has come out here and he is accelerating through those gears. 132 Ks. That is massive. That was Djokovic from last night. And that is slightly superior from Sinner as well. Quality hitting from the German. Mickelson doing well to stay in touch. Well, I don't know if you guys caught it there in the Zverev service game at 30 all when Mickelson took that forehand and came in even though he lost the point Zverev kind of stared him down as if to say you're taking my second serve and coming in so Zverev knows he's in the battle will Mickelson be able to keep it up He's got to respect Zverev's backhand, but he's also got to back his own backhand. Has seen a number of cheap errors where he's tried to quickly redirect into the Zverev forehand. isn't it this young man 13, 19 years of age huh yeah i mean he's just not afraid to get to the net he's taking balls early as soon as he can and he's making me feel like if you don't put this ball deep i'm coming at you <laughs> you'd expect at 19 though he'll make mistakes okay. like that i mean he's He's a young kid. I mean, playing one of the best players in the world here, and and you'd expect him to, you know, not to be perfect, but geez, he's got the makings, the foundations here of being a really um, an interesting all-court player. Position though, and uh, and you can understand how a young player will over a five-setter or three, four, five-setter against a great player. He, he he doesn't want to have to defend too much here, I don't think. And nobody really does against Zverev, by the way. from 
Williams where he's apologizing maybe you from up here. Please. I didn't see that it came off the frame and it just died as it went over the net. But there it was a great is. hustle from the Five German. 5-2. kid's going to come out here I don't know entirely if this is for Sasha's diabetes or not this little package that's coming out here but uh, certainly looking like something's going to be heading his way that he obviously had asked for when we saw that at the uh, previous changeover when he came down to this particular end but here's the hustle he is an incredible athlete as well look at that drive head just in front no nope, that's uh, right out of the middle of the string so I wouldn't be apologizing for that Well, young Alex took he, he took a risk there, didn't he? He went across court and went in against Dana. the forehand and just found himself out of position. A little awkward on the first volley. Didn't do enough with it. And a great uh, cross court by Sverev got him out of trouble. Thing about these great players, isn't it? They can build through the tournament. So many people come into majors and need to hit the ground running. They need to be perfect from the first round to just try and get wins on the ball. But the ones that have space, like he does, he's able to find some uh, good tennis. People like Eric Diaz and obviously Manny Diaz, who's been a legendary coach at the University of Georgia, but they are literally the lifeblood of tennis in various countries. There are, and we need millions of sort of Eric Diaz's around the world for this sport because they have invested in centers and create so many great players and just good environments for people to come out. Nicholson, the lighthouse for him at the moment. But those private ventures for me need to have the federation backing as well if they're fortunate enough to have the money to be able to do it. That's your luck. Third ace. Not sure that's the tactic Sasha needs to use. Keep that one in the back pocket, I'd say, for a while. He doesn't need to, to go to that. It's not his strength. Well, it seems Vera is going to serve this set out. It'll be really interesting to see how young Alex reacts early in the second for me. Well, he introduces the ball to the line for another race. And the German fans are happy, as I'm sure Sasha is. This is a far better performance from him. 36 minutes, 6-2. Last match he came out, he was uh, a little unhappy at Tol I should say in the first match against Dominic Koffler, he came out, he was very unhappy with his string tension, he was sending rackets off, he really couldn't find his groove, managed to get through his fellow German in four sets. But he does look very much in tune with everything out here not a lot that Mickelson did wrong in that opening set just uh, outpaced in various departments
And the winner of this match, bottom right, as you can see, will take on Cam Norrie, who had the best win in a major that he's ever had in his career, taking out Casper Ruud, who had looked in fine fettle in the lead-up tournaments coming into Australia, battled hard in his last round, the Norwegian, to win in five sets against Max Purcell, and went down in four sets to Cam. Just a little look at what's been going on on the second serve as well. I'll be curious to see if uh, there's been any adjustment from Mickelson on the second serve return of Zverev's as we see the final race clean up the opening set. Second set. Serene progress through the opener for Mickelson. Sasha. Onus very much on his inexperienced opponent to try and make something happen here in the second set. There, he's just getting the ball so deep in the court. You know, Mickelson's used to, you know, he's got big pace off the backhand, especially, and he's used to getting a few more shorter balls. But right now, Zverev is just painting the baseline and hard for Mickelson to get in. Looks like he squares up a little bit on his serve Nick uh, Mickelson looks as though that back foot although it doesn't come right round to the to the baseline that would be a bit extreme but it still looks like he pulls quite far past the left one it, I just feel as though maybe there's a way of staying a little longer side on yeah I'd agree with you patch it becomes like pretty, pretty open you know I mean once you pull that right foot around too far then it's a bit, a bit too open and it's hard to hit the flat one and easier maybe to hit a, hit a slice and you're losing a bit of power because you don't have enough leg drive and it's going to have a tendency i feel watching it to prefer the serve out wide on the juice and the one down the ad and as players get used to playing him a little bit more they're going to take those serves away from him so he's going to have to get the other serves better He's going to have to rely a lot on that, the retrieving skills, if he can't hit his spot down the tee a little bit better than he did there. But a good start to the second from the American. Yeah, you know, it's interesting, Patch, like he said. I mean, he's bringing that foot around, so it's more slice out wide on the deuce and tee on the ad. And that's actually kind of, you know, going to Zverev's forehand, more the weaker side in general on the return. But right now, Zverev has been, been so great, just making so many returns. And, uh, but yeah, I'd agree with you to get more pace. It just needs a little bit more leg drive and that right foot behind the left. Looks like his uh, form from Sydney fits. He has turned up here in Melbourne. I'm keen to know what Nick thinks about the speed of shot and, and how Mickelson compares with Zverev, maybe after this point, but he looks like he's hitting it pretty heavy to me, Zverev, and I'm wondering how far off that pace Mickelson is. Is he close, Nick, after this point?
close to look, he, he's very close. I mean, I'm watching this, and the ball is literally skimming the net from both players. Um, not a lot of margin for error, but the guys are hitting it flat through the court, and he is definitely keeping up with the pace. I mean, if you look at the average for Zverev on the forehand speed, it's 125.7, and for Mickelson, average is 124.3, so he's keeping up with the pace. What you're seeing tonight is why this man has emerged twice from the best of the best competition at the year-end championships on the ATP, holding the trophy. This is quality here from Zverev. Game on. How's Mickelson's slice back here, Nick? Yeah, you know what? I, I've seen him play a few matches, and he doesn't necessarily use it. You know, I think he trusts his backhand and backs himself with it down the line, the cross court, and a lot of the guys that he's playing at the challenger level before making the top 100 just couldn't hang with his pace and consistency off that side, so he hasn't really needed to use a slice. So to answer your question, I'm not quite Love sure. Hitting. You know, I, I think uh, that would be something that he could look to implement because that'll just uh, add an extra wrinkle to the already big game that he has. I mean, he's obviously a good player. I mean, it's blatantly obvious. Uh, I mean, to be 19 and to be out here full stop in a third round already, I mean, it's, that's a big deal. I guess the journey will decide, though, won't it, how good he can become. Um, this is a real learning curve here, though. And, and you know, the pace that you have to deal with when you first come into contact with the, with the best players in the world, it's, it's a bit shocking. He's been able to stand up to it pretty well. Absolutely. Already, um, which is impressive in itself. You know, but um, there's signs here that it... it there are signs that this could be a little bit one-sided, but that in, in, a, in a way you sort of expect that. Oh, Sparov is feeling it tonight. Party time. I mean, it's always dangerous to go to a running forehand. I know it may be a slightly weaker shot, but if you, if you let a pro like this or a great player run at a forehand, now I know this is his favourite shot, but you've got to almost put that ball away if you're going to go there and come in. What a game from Sfera there, Pitch. Game yep. Absolutely excelled, didn't he? 2 1. Sfera leads two games, 2 1. That was a little bit of a lesson. And at 19 years of age, you have to say that uh, you don't really make mistakes. You know, you learn lessons. And that's what he's getting at the moment. It's going to be fascinating to see if he can change anything. Feels as though he has another place that he can go to to just try and make Sasha a little uncomfortable out here. But those two are also learning as we go. Sasha just checking into his bag there, of course, can monitor uh, his insulin levels uh, for his diabetes one.
time. All's well in Sasha's world tonight. Very calm in the box, wasn't the other night. They sure are relaxed, aren't they, yeah. tonight? There was definite tension in the previous round. He obviously feels comfortable as we speak. What choice from Sasha there? Fifteen. Doesn't often make that mistake. and could take this second serve a little bit on. I know it does allow Sasha the opportunity to serve quick into the body if he does do that. But he's not beating him from the back of the court, so he's got to kind of find a way to make these rallies have a different outcome. Yeah, I'd agree with you, Patch. I mean, that second serve was definitely attackable, and... You know, the couple times he did come in, and even when he lost the point, Zverev so just gave him a look as if to say, are you actually attacking my second serve? So I think he needs to put pressure on the second serve and see if he can be more double faults. Sass has been serving so well. About 80% the last match I, I did of his, and uh, 75 to 80%. And... and so you don't get a lot of chances on the second serve. Can he take the backhand down the line, Nick? I mean, is that part of his repertoire? Because we've seen him come in off the forehand from a second serve. Yeah, I definitely say that that's part of his repertoire. I mean, he's got a short backswing on that return. Um, you know, it's just a matter of doing it and trusting it in a pressure situation. You know, he's on Rotten Labor Arena in front of this many people. And, you know, if you don't come out with that intention, you know, before the match starts, it's hard to kind of, with the nerves going, it's hard to kind of find it right away. But I definitely think that's in his toolkit. Rare miss tonight. He's no shrinking violet, is he? He's, uh, he's got a bit of extrovert about him. Yeah, he's hyper competitive. When uh, you talk to people about how he was as a junior and how he describes himself. His mum, Sandra, who uh, used to teach. She was at San Diego State, actually, where my 
daughter is right now. She didn't teach there, thankfully. She, she'll be glad she didn't teach my daughter. <laughs> she'll be talking tennis or studies? Studies, yeah. That would be a hard ask. I would not put anyone through that. From the same gene pool? Uh, As my wife, you're right. <laughs> Spent many hours out there with his mum, honing his craft. But this is the big leagues. And he's finding out fast because he's putting himself in these positions very quickly in his journey up the rankings. I don't think that was a lead, Nick. I think that was, I can't get it. <laughs> yes. Yeah, that was a, uh, should I Pete Sampras overhead this or let it go? <laughs> but he also realized that it was just a little bit over his head. And luckily for him, it was out. Nice change up, though. Good thinking. Yep. what I want to hear from Alex Mickelson a little bit more of the come on so, you know I've seen him playing a lot of challengers and he will get in your face and he'll stare you down he'll give you a come on and he'll let you know he's there so far he hasn't let Alex know that maybe this will be the time oh. a bit of traction in this second set he was losing touch with Zverev but it's just the one break 2-3 all right let's just uh, go a little granular for a second and have a little look at uh, what Mickelson serve looks like and uh, doing a nice job on the tee in terms of mixing it up slightly better accuracy on the one out wide the 50 percent on the left of your screen there trying to get it away from sasha in terms of points one and lost still at 50 percent he'd like that number to be a little higher but it's uh, on the juice side that he's struggling at the moment it is a serve that likes to be swung out there sasha's got a feel for it and he knows the serve down the tee is also going to kind of come into him so he's able to cover the one out wide and still make the majority of the ones coming down the tee so uh, his favorite serve is not having the impact that it probably does again it's a lot of other players so that is something that he's having to manage out here in real time another magnificent day and night here at melbourne the crowds have absolutely thronged in it's been uh, absolutely bustling outside whether we top the hundred thousand mark for a double session or not we don't know at the moment attendance will come out tomorrow felt close though fitzy didn't it it did today a wall of people at one stage <laughs> oh. Not a bad idea. There's never been a drop shot hit that's hit the net that no one's thought looks like the wrong shot. No, and I think I think bringing Zverev in, you know, when he unwillingly, that's a good play because he likes to come in on his own accord, not when you make him come in. And it also shows that he... He's got different ways of winning points, and you need that. You can't just out hit, uh, you know, outlast the opposition or, or play the same point over and over. I think to get to the higher levels, the higher echelons of the sport, you need a, multi a, a multitude of ways to win points. And even by attempting that drop shot and hitting the ball and coming in, the occasional serve and volley, 
Forehand. The off forehand he uses. He, he can angle the ball to, with the forehand out inside in as well. He's got a lot of ways he can win points. But it is looking a little ominous today. Yeah, I know. I've been speaking with David Nakin, who's one of the head U.S. national coaches in Los Angeles, California, and that's where Mickelson spent a little preseason there. And he said, "Look, this guy's one of the best problem solvers that I've ever seen." So you know, now he's down a set and a break. Can he find a way to get out of this? And also for Alec Mickelson, I mean, how fast is the guy? He is so fast for as tall and big as he is. It's impressive to watch courtside. Oh. And he, his body will fill out too, and he'll become more of an athlete, I think. And that, that he should get quicker. It's actually not a bad place to sit the ball a few times in repetition into uh, the Zvera forehand, just half a meter off the center line, just to try and get him to spin one short where you can possibly attack. Dropping it short, you're going to start running. But if you can keep that length. And again. Yeah, you're right, Pitsy. Just sometimes Varev, just down the middle of the court, and as boring as it sounds, you hit it to his forehand in the middle of the court. Sometimes he just doesn't give himself enough space around the ball. So we'll see Alec Mickelson has figured that out. Lights. That's it. Well, he's gone to the body forehand again with the serve this time. So maybe the wheels are turning in there. game that Zverev has played tonight. Mickelson will be grateful for that and hope there's a few more around the corner from his perspective. 4-3 though, Zverev, second set. I love people like Eric Diaz. I, they uh, really impress me because it's hard work to build something from nothing in tennis. It's, you know, uh, there's not a lot of money in performance and there, Eric on the left has uh, done it the hard way by moving to an unknown place. And I really believe great coaches are the ones that have made good players, not necessarily great players. And no, who knows, Alex may be a great player, but making good players out of unpromising raw materials. Alex was not necessarily seen as one of the go-to guys in, in the US. And look what Eric has managed to see, that vision from 12 years old that he's turned into somebody that is well established at 19 in the world's top 100 Time. and that is the sign of a great coach ultimately. Pretty energetic in the crowd and some uh, legendary names. The one and only Jim Courier who has always had such a big starring role on court and particularly on court with his interviews. Boris Becker not here this year. Ivan Lendl, of course. Remember the hat? Iconic hat. I remember the forehand. More than the hat. I can remember the hat. 
But that forehand, if it hit you in the chest... Uh... And it hit you a lot in the chest. <laughs> Had to get the arnica out after, uh, after a practice with Ivan. He certainly tried to hit you in the chest in practice. No doubt about that. Oh. And that's that's, that's where we see the weakness from Alex Mickelson there on the forehand. Again, you know, there's there's times where it, where it looks like okay, he's figured it out and he's getting enough spin to get it up and down. But then there's times where he pulls off of it, and you know, and then his confidence starts to go a little bit, and he's looking over at Eric Diaz uh, trying to find solutions, and you know, still plenty of time. But let's see if he finds it. A little half step to his backhand side created space for the forehand very quickly latched onto it short on that forehand he's going to take it a bit like Alex Demonor it's a different type of forehand he doesn't run through it like Demonor does but he's got probably well, probably a bit more racket head speed there and certainly can get it from A to B quickly he's prepared to move in behind it I like that play Yeah, and he picked, the, he picked the side there, too. Moved to the forehand wing before Sverre almost hit the serve. That is a fabulous effort to balance the books in this second set. Forenzo. Looked unlikely. And Eric there doing exactly what Nick was saying. He wants to hear him. He's been uh, calling for that. Yeah, this is, I mean, that's well within his DNA to, to give the fist pump, to give some fire, to, get, to try to get this crowd going. And, you know, he, he's got that Ben Shelton in him where he, he, he'll, he'll, you know, raise the roof and wants everyone to get, get it going. So let's see if he does it now. Now that he's back on serve and the crowd's starting to get into it. That's it. Oh. 
Well, he had to do something to change it. I didn't see that break coming in, in the games prior to that. He just didn't look dangerous at all. And then all of a sudden, in one game, he lights it up. It's interesting young character. Speaking with another USA national coach, Dean Goldfinder, earlier today, and Dean's worked with likes of Andy Roddick and a lot of the Ben Shelton as well, a lot of former pros, and he was saying that, look, this guy has so many intangibles, just so many ways to win matches, and we're seeing it now. 14-15. He'll use the drop shot. He'll use a certain volley. He's just not afraid to try new things. And at 19 years old, so impressive. He is feeling it right now. Making all the right decisions and moves. 5-4, Mickelson, second set. Mickelson leads, five games to four. Tell you what, it's not easy to shift gears out on this sort of uh, massive core and find a shot that wasn't there really for the opening hour. But that is exactly what the 19 year old has done. Found some real impactful forehands in that last game. And then you can see there, had the presence of mind just to guide it down the line. Took advantage of a very sloppy game from Zverev at 4 2 to close the gap to 4 3, and there was a little bit of residue for the German. Eric getting something for the, for the ground. One of the world's great left-handers. One wonders what both of these two that are out on the Rod Laver Arena court right now would have been had they both played with their left hands. They've both got very dominant left hands. Very plays golf left-handed. Mickelson also considers himself actually a natural left-hander. And you can see it in both players' backhands. Super flexible, huge repertoire. <laughs> now that forehand has gone stone cold. And a warm night here in Melbourne. It did in his previous round. It went stone cold for a while. He, he sort of lost it in, and it caused most of his frustrations on the night. of that forehand, which has just put him in a little bit of trouble in this second set. Lost about 3Ks on that forehand, dropped about 100 RPMs because he's not swinging as hard at the ball. Therefore not getting quite the shape that he would like.
and ultimately that is what's going to determine how high a ceiling that Mickelson has because the backhand down the line is absolutely ideal and then he's going to get a lot of cross-court responses from his opponents and his forehand is going to have to capitalize on it. Game's on. Fifteen. And just now, you're starting to hear the bark of Alex Mickelson giving a come on, not leaving his line there. He stayed just behind the baseline and had Zverev on a string. So now he's starting to feel it. I feel like, again, see if he can keep up this level for a long period of time. So uh, his second yeah, serve, he may have a few little uh, technical deficiencies on his first, but his second gets good speed, good depth, and that is a lovely hold from the American 6-5. talking about one of the things that obviously he noticed as his uh, developmental coach that he saw the fire the love of the competition that was something that uh, Alex had in abundance right from a, an early age and you've seen it tonight that's what comes to the fore in moments like that this is like the the bit of armor that the great players have in moments like this where they're getting overwhelmed and outplayed just finding a way to get a little bit more out of themselves in what was looking like a slightly desperate situation here in the second set well not only has he breathed new life into the second set i feel like he's got a genuine chance of snatching it Packed house. Every seat a good one on the Rod Laver Arena, and things looking good for Alex Mickelson right now.
Bert Taylor. Strong way to take himself into this Ball break. Here, well, well, I feel that Sverov's output was more in the previous game, even though he didn't break. Once he'd lost his serve and, and got back on even terms, he he's he's had to get his uh, adrenaline up a little bit, I think here, and, and he it's coming through in this game as well. Trying to set himself up for the tiebreaker. If you want to know what perfection looks like in a service game, that was it. Tiebreak. Healthy boost of confidence for Zverev. Look at the change from him in terms of the forehand. Most players are going to be around 55 45 going cross court. He is 39% only, and he's attacking the strength of Zverev, and he's coming out on top. Hugely impressive. Electric. That's what I've seen when he's played these challenger level tournaments. Backhands down the line. Just incredible pace behind it. And then the Ben Shelton and Mickelson starting to come out. He's starting to get the crowd involved. He had his own patented follow through there too, by the way. few at the bar that will disagree with me that was the shot of the day but for me it was off balance needing to get something going somehow found something absolutely extraordinary and try to back it up with the sequel you know the first thing you I, I tend to do when you look at a young player is look at his athleticism and and I don't instantly see it with him but but he anticipates that's like gold too the shot before the backhand, he had already moved towards the forehand to cover it. Zverev hit it almost on the line, got that back, and then finished it with that backhand. <laughs> Just be a bit careful about celebrating too soon, though. Too early. <laughs> this is number six player in the world yeah but i don't mind that that celebration because I, I feel like that's relaxing him a little bit even though he lost those two points i think you know that, that that's a kind of i can breathe now i can kind of enjoy this a little bit more so let's see how it works out for him Nature. 
like I said. The best players make you a better player, but you don't often see that transformation right in the middle of the match. to the baseline or somewhere near it is extraordinary. Let's just go back. Let's wind back to one of the shots of the day. You can pick your hot shots. There's so many around the courts here at Melbourne Park. But for my money, this was it. You think he was going to make it here, Fitzy? No, I didn't. There's the patented backhand, though. <laughs> That's something you see across the road at the MCG, isn't it? <laughs> I would have thought so. It's almost a cricket like shot. with the fry frying pan. I'll tell you what, he's getting a lot of a lot of serves back now too, which is also an indication that he's smart enough Nicholson. and mature enough to read the play. That's what Nick's been talking about. He's he's got the ability to sort of anticipate. He moves early because of that. And a lot to like. Mini break still. Oh. These are the moments when a great first serve is just so important. It puts an awful lot of pressure on your ground strokes to come Zverev. up with something good. It was a decent first serve, but Zvero has been cutting that one off. We showed it to you earlier. It's his favorite serve. Zverev was waiting for it. You know what made that pass so good too was after he, Nicholson hit this volley, he got so close to the net to cut off the angle, almost on top of the net, but Zverev still found it. Point for a two sets to lovely. Yeah, man. 
Hamilton stopped. There was code red for Zverev in the tiebreaker, but he answered the call and he has a two sets to love lead now. I just want to see it. sense of how fiery he can be. There'll be some good uh, good reading here, uh, certainly better than the opening set for the American, but once again, the second serve points one for Zverev, super high at 80%. He's got to find a way to kind of carve out a little uh, of su su success for himself on the second serve of Zverev. Sasha is not one of those that hunts the third shot on the forehand as often as other players. Loves to hit his backhand. Yeah, there was a lot of good stuff in there from, from the youngster. Well, there was. You know, it, it was a funny old set in a way, wasn't it? Uh, it looked like Zverev was cruising. And it, it was hard for me to see how Alex was going to break him at one stage, like deep into the second set. And out of nowhere, he lifted his game. And, and this is a, a, it's a great sign from a young player to be able to do that. Gave himself a chance, at least. Got a little bit of help, Sasha, from his uh, opponent to turn things around, but he'll be happy with that. set away from a place in the last 16. I'm just texting with Sasha's brother, Misha Zvera, right now, and I said, what would you want to see in Sasha? And he said, look, I'd like to see him be a little bit more determined when he's up, be like Rafa, who wants to destroy you with his intensity and have intensity all the way into the end. Let's we'll see if he picks it up now. Oh. Promising start in that regard. Yeah, he, he just kind of went on to say, he goes, he got a little casual and comfy and you could kind of see the look in his eye that he lost focus and he wants to see that intensity back in Sasha. Well, the great competitors do that. Though, they, they squash you. They squash you like an insect if they can. And uh, you don't want to give any of these competitors down the other end a sniff of a chance. If you do, you're asking for trouble. You open the door, they'll generally run through it. So you, ne you need to have that killer instinct in a one-on-one -on -one sport. And... Uh, Maybe we'll see it here. Game's better. First game, that's it. Yeah, Mickelson uh, just getting a little frustrated at the end of the second set, and obviously he knew that was his chance. It's not going to be uh, too many leads that Sasha loses from two sets to love up. He did lose a big one, though, of course, at the US Open final when he took on Dominic Team from this exact situation. But you need a bit of fire, don't you? You've got to shuffle, uh, shuffle a little fire onto those coals inside of you. Oh. 
Lafetti. Let's just take a little look. He gets quite early into the into the serve, doesn't he? Baltos maybe could be a little further forward for the what he's looking at. so crucial for him to well, be able 13. to get himself out of some of these exchanges as good as he is from the back of the court there is no question on the men's tour that you need to have a serve that you can take your opponent's racket out of their hand at certain times maybe a little trip to Andy Roddick's place as uh, he did a lovely little job in the offseason with Coco Goff Take a trip to Fabrice Santoro's place as well to learn the drop shot. Fabrice, <laughs> two hands on both sides. Now that was a, that was a poor one. That was a that was a youngster's attempt there, and he's. This is the first time his body language is not. It's not great, is it here? So th this is a maturity thing, and you can understand it. In an environment like this, not easy. He actually grew up for a long time playing two hands up for Bruce because he's naturally lefty until his mum said you've got to learn a, if he learn could, a one, one handed forehand. If he could have made a choice, why wouldn't he go left handed? Yeah, it's a great question. I actually haven't seen the answer for that as much research as I've done. Well, you, you just can't trust those left handers as much, you know? Come on, Patch, get on top of your game. <laughs> of shots uncomplicates the situation for Sasha yeah guys you could just tell as you mentioned just the body language right now is a bit down he felt like he had maybe that second second set in the bag with being up 4-2 in the breaker and you know on the changeover after the second set he was looking at Eric Diaz saying I just gave it away I gave it away why not and uh, he needs to get that positive mojo back There was a little bit of period in that second set where the forehand got a little subdued, but uh, not anymore. Godzilla. The most confusing shot for me. I was like, where's that racket? That's not one of the two players that uh, are out there with. Nice bit of art. Paul Taylor. Five sets is a different beast, isn't it? It really is in the men's game. Best of five at Grand Slams. A whole different ball game. Game is 
He's running right out here on the Rod Laver Arena now. Three love, third set. Better lead. Three games to love. Important for Mickelson here to hang around as long as possible just to keep taking that incremental sort of uh, data away for the next bit of uh, practice that he can get and learn as much as he can about how to try and stay with these top players. And see there, Sasha's back foot that comes right up and closes in on the left foot and we've been talking about Alex's sort of spinning around the outside a bit so as much as it is about hard work and plugging in and competing hard at the moment there is still a few things in his game technically that you feel is going to have to improve if he is going to mix it with the elite on a consistent basis which is what his hope is at this stage of his career time Outside the Rod Laver Arena, best fan experience at a major. Don't think it comes close at the moment. The uh, wonderful job that everybody does here. Not just in terms of looking after the players, but uh, Tennis Australia and uh, everybody that they use in terms of event management outside in the concourses and the seating arrangements. Absolutely exceptional. Love yeah, for Mickelson, things seem to just be going so fast now. You know, when you, if you get down on yourself just a little bit, I mean, his bear is making him pay. You know, Misha said he wants to see that positivity and t intensity in his eye, and Sasha definitely has that intensity now. Oh. Sasha missing that Jordan forehand Lee's and getting upset with himself for, for missing that. Thank so you. he definitely is not letting his foot off the gas, even though he's up two sets of love and three love. He wants to put him to bed now. To miss a ball by that far uh, means that you, I think you do lose a bit of concentration for a, a great player like this. But that's an unusual miss, and that maybe is what Big Brother Misha is talking about. Keep his, uh, keep his head together here, younger brother. Decent hole. New balls, please. There's a man in uh, Alex's box that you know. Is that right, Steve Baldas? Yes, I do know Steve. Three games to one. He was the CEO of Tennis South Australia up until recently. Went to college in uh, University of Georgia, right? And, Correct. Uh, and he was a junior Wimbledon doubles champion too, by the way, Steve. Must be part of the management team. There he is in the middle there, second row back. A good South Australian pitch, if I may say. That's an oxymoron, isn't it? <laughs> oh, stop it. <laughs> yeah, as, as long as you put the oxy in front. I'll grab my coat. Oh, 
Fair dealing. Thirteen K difference between their average first serve speeds. The juice has sort of gone out of it though, hasn't it? It's the competitive, competitive uh, juices of the youngster seems to have just dissipated to a degree. Forty fifteen. And that it will be the greatest lesson that I think Alex can take away from this match. I know you can't teach height and Alex a little Obviously, Sasha a little taller than Mickelson, but at the same time, the frequency of cheap points and at big moments. As time goes on, 14, he'll be 13. very, very competitive, won't he? I mean, he's 19 years old. Now, there's not these days there's not that many unless you're an Alcaraz or you know someone incredibly special generational it's tough to be this good this early Pete Sampras on the run down the line and the chance of USA now but yeah you guys are right I mean again at 19 he has this utter belief that he can beat anyone on any given day and it's hard to teach that as well um, you know and so I think this guy's a limit for this kid and he just loves to be on the court Double digits in terms of aces for the German. Excellent depth, change of direction. Mickelson struggling to catch up to it and struggling to catch up Zverev with Zverev in terms of the scoreboard. 4 1, third set to the gym. And let's uh, have a little look at the depth as well that Zverev has been able to put, particularly on the backhand side, of course, because he hits it so flat, it travels so long. And that's why, kind of strangely, it's better to serve and volley to his backhand because it goes long and you can take it out of the air, whereas you go to his forehand and he actually dips it at your feet, makes your first volley very tricky. But those are some excellent numbers from Zerev in terms of finding the last third of the court. But it is interesting, isn't it, for all you 
that are wanting to play this game as a professional don't think that these guys are always painting the lines. You look at how few balls from Zverev have actually gone close to the line compared to the majority of the shots there. They are just so good at repeating the same thing over ah. and over again. Lucas made a, another little memento in that last game with that forehand running past down the line. Let's see what else he can offer over the closing stages of this third set. Nick, obviously a lot of hype and obviously a lot of uh, eyes on American tennis on both the men's and the women's side. It, uh, as much as I know you have a lot of sports and American uh, tennis players feel as though they get a bit in the shadow from NFL, NBA and everything else, but there is still a lot of interest on in it. When you say the sky's the limit for Alex, what does that mean? I mean, look, at 19 years old and, and with what he's doing now, I mean, I feel like he's a top 20 player, um, you know, and then it just depends on how how effective he can start to be with his forehand. He needs to improve his volleys. I mean, as you saw, kind of the backhand volley has really been struggling. Pace, pace of the serve as well. But again, you know, he, he's only 19. 15, he's so young. 30. And, uh, you know, again, when Taylor Fritz was playing at 19, and I just love the belief that he had against everybody that he played. And, you know, Alex Mickelson, he's kind of a, you know, a loud guy in the locker room, even, you know, for personal Australian Open. Guys are like, who is this guy? And so, so, so much of that, you just feel 15, the confidence of somebody, 14. and he wants to be one of the top players in the locker room. And so I think he will be. And also, just like this, you know, he's down two yeah, sets, 4-1, it's 1540. You know, we're, we're kind of saying again that he's he's done. This might be kind of the end of this this match, but this guy is fighting every single point and just not giving up. You got to love that at such a young age. Two, two. 
and you want to build a reputation that you've got to put yourself away and that's what he's trying to do out here tonight very unable to capitalize on those couple of chances ah! there's been some lovely serving from uh, Zverev but there's also been a little bit of a drop off here from Mickelson sustainability for the youngsters coming onto tour as well being able to manage their pace through five sets of tennis is never going to be easy dropped eight k's in this third set off the forehand no, James Venom. Overwhelmingly great serving from Sasha Zvera puts him one game away from the fourth round. Five games to two. Change things up a little bit, Sasha, with the way that he plays against different opponents. And uh, he's had to hit a lot more backhands tonight. 60% of them have been uh, backhands, the way that Mickelson guides his forehand down the line. He's had to beat the American with that shot. His best season was when he actually flipped it. He's been very comfortable hitting backhands in the course of his career. Often would play the season hitting more backhands than forehands. But back in 2022, when he was just the one match away from being world number one before the injury struck at Roland Garros, he was using his forehand 60% of the time. But he still has the luxury that very few players out there on the tour have of being able to beat you time. with their backhand. He's going to go home happy. Zverev, a game away from the win. <laughs> Nick, get yourself out there and show Sasha how it's done. <laughs> that was uh, moving to the left, trying to hit a drop volley to the right. Um, yeah, that didn't look pretty, but I think you would like that one back. But not only that, I, I got to text me Misha and say, what do you think about that? Because Misha was a pretty good volleyer himself. <laughs> Chasing perfection is never easy. And also very rare. Doesn't look any better in slow motion, does it? 
one of the few relatable things he's done tonight for many of us. On the stroke of midnight, a bit of good fortune for this man, and it would appear no Cinderella story tonight for the American. Some good news for Mickelson, he won't have to eat the same things he has been doing. Won't have to wear the same hat, same shower in the locker room because that's how superstitious he is. His lovely run potentially ends here. into the fourth round and sets up a clash with Cameron. But Mickelson has been one of the stories of the last 12 months. I believe he was the first amateur since Jeff Tarango all the way back in 1988 who lost to Andre Agassi in New Jersey in an ATP event to be able to do that in Newport last year and to knock out four-time champion John Isner along the way. Better days ahead for Mickelson, it's been a great tournament. Scored the best one of his career over Lehechka, the Adelaide champion in the previous round. Eric Diaz can hold his head up high. As should this man, this 19-year-old. As for Sasha, the seventh meeting with Cam Nori. He lost the uh, opening couple, has won the last four, and is, incidentally, on a stunning 13-match win against left-handers. But he is going to feel, to feel as though he's built some nice form. Scratchy in the opening couple of rounds. But that was clean. He's with John Fitzgerald. Sasha, well done. Uh, they're never easy. And uh, there's all these youngsters keep coming up. Huh? It's like a never-ending stream. This is another one. Yeah. I used to be one of those. I'm not anymore. But... <laughs> Uh, yeah, I mean, the, the new generation is obviously uh, coming and they're coming very fast and there's a lot of great players, you know, we have uh, Carlos Alcaraz who's won Grand Slams already, um, you know, we have Yannick Sinner who is uh, one of the best players in the world now, we have Holger Rune and we have also the new guys coming up who are even younger than them, so 
Um, tennis, tennis is in good hands. You know, everybody's always worried. You know, when when Sampras and Agassi retired, what was going to happen next? And Nadal and Federer came, and Djokovic, obviously. And, you know, when when those guys are going to retire, who's going to come next? And I think tennis is really in in, in very good hands with with the new generation. And, and um, you guys will have plenty to 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 watch. Well said. And I don't think you have too much to worry. You, you're going okay. Your age is relative, okay? You, you're going okay. Oh, I am getting older, like everybody else. But uh, um, yeah, I don't know. What, yeah, thanks for reminding me that I'm getting older. I don't know what, what to say now. You're, you're a young fella. I was a little worried about you after Sydney. You had such an extraordinary um, performance up there. Well done, by the way. And, and uh, I was a bit worried that you might take a bit too long to recover from that. But it seems like you're quite okay. Yeah, um, I'm obviously a genius and I decided to play five hours the, straight away uh, in the first two matches. Um, you know, the, the tactical talk before, before the match with my father, who's also my coach, was, was brilliant today. Um, you know, he obviously told me, you know, hit more winners than him, less, less unforced errors, more aces, and all of that stuff, which is the usual. Uh, very simple to do, obviously. Um, but then he also uh, he also put you know put his hand on my shoulder and he said like son, nobody wants you to, uh, nobody wants to watch you play tennis at three o'clock in the morning so please hurry up. <laughs> uh, very good. Well, he's, you're from the same gene pool, so you you must be a genius as well. Look, um, when when your older brother arrives, who do you listen to more? Do you listen to Misha, your older brother, or do you oh, did you listen to your dad? Oh. Of course I don't listen to my brother. Why would I listen to my brother? Why would any listen, uh, sibling listen to uh, anybody else? Um, but he keeps, every time we come back here, he keeps reminding me that he has one record that I don't have on this court or anywhere else on the court. He's, he, he keeps on reminding me he's the only one in the family who beat the world number one at a Grand Slam, and I haven't done that yet. And I hope I can, <laughs> I can finally manage somehow because he... It's getting annoying, you know, it's getting annoying to, to keep remembering that at some point. Well, big brothers are like that. They really are. Well done. The, the tournament's just beginning, really. If you're going to go deep in this, uh, you've got to be patient. You have a pretty tough next round. Do you know who it is? Do you want to know who it is? Cameron, Cameron Norrie, isn't it? Cameron Norrie, yeah. You, some guys don't know. Well, well done. You know who it is. It's a left-hander. And my esteemed colleague, and I say mate upstairs, Mark Pecci, uh, suggested to me that your record's pretty good against left-handers. Do you know what it is? is it, you've, you've won your last 13. I've won my last... Thank you. Thank you for reminding me, because normally you jinx it that way, but I hope I'll go... Especially the number, like, 13, you know, you don't want to really stop there. Um, but I'll, I'll, I'll do everything I can to make it 14. Um, he's obviously played brilliant tennis so far. You know, he, they played an amazing match with Kaspar Ruud. You know, obviously the women's match was, was extremely entertaining, but also extremely long. So I had a lot of time in the locker room to watch my opponents play. Um, yeah, he's, he's in great form and obviously I'm looking forward to, to playing him. Well, well done, mate. Well, you give us a lot of pleasure watching you. Congratulations. A good night for you and for your brother and your dad. Well done, Sasha. Thank you. It's a match that if he put his best tennis on the court at this stage of their respective careers, he should come out on top, and that's exactly what happened. There was that little moment in the second set where Mickelson managed to match him, and for a little period of two or three games actually eclipsed him, but Zverev hit back, and then he was uh, motoring away to the finishing line in straight sets, which is exactly what he needed after a couple of battles, as he has just touched on there with John Fitzgerald in the interview. And with a particularly tough one around the corner, Cam Norrie will always make it physical, even if he is going to be making some more forays to the net, as we saw against Kasper Ruud so successfully today. That is, that is a man that knows how to get something. <laughs> If you, uh, if you beg for it in that manner, you are going to get something. Sasha handing it out, and the souvenir is his, and he desperately wanted it, as did Zverev. Just uh, a minute shy of a couple of hours, some uh, 
some decent numbers from Sasha as well in terms of unforced errors to winners. Uh, there were just periods where he's got to be careful that he doesn't throw too many of those in there. The better players are going to take advantage of that and a set or two may slip by. As for Mickelson, that was uh, a lesson I'm sure that was well learned by himself and also his coach at this stage of the journey. And it will be interesting to see as he goes through the season just what his ranking may be by the time this time next year because of course he went from outside the world's top 500 to inside the world's top 100 in 12 months the next halving or so of his ranking will be a lot tougher the night is over here from melbourne park as we see where sasha squares up against nori in that part of the draw Ketsmanovic, a winner today for the second time in a row he beat jan lennonstroff having to save match points he did it against last year's semi-finalist tommy paul today to set up a uh, match with alcaraz and with the quality from Ketsmanovic off the ground that will be a certainly an easy watch for all of us as fans her catch will take on because uh, the uh, french 21 year old who has been playing beautiful well, has, has uh, impressed over the last 12 months, took out Dimitrov, who was the winner up in Brisbane. That was a big surprise. Big news for Portugal. There is always hype around Sasha Zverev at a Grand Slam. And tonight is no different as he moves through once again for the fifth time into the last 16 here in Melbourne. It's been another.
Thank you. I'm sorry.